Hey y'all, welcome to the channel. Sprinkle, sprinkle. Thanks for joining. So today we're going to be talking about only pick me just want revenge on men. Now let me tell y'all, I'm older. I know a lot of y'all are younger and I, I definitely know the feeling of wanting revenge on someone. Let me tell y'all why first, before I start, why women want revenge on men. So we can understand why I said Pick Misha only wants revenge. Remember, Pick Misha is not a permanent phase. We grow out of it. So when you are young and gullible and naive and don't know a lot, you go in relationships hoping for the best. And when the man is not perfect, when he messes up, when he's not Prince Charming, when he's not the perfect gentleman, when he's not who he was in the beginning of the relationship, you all of a sudden get upset because this person is not perfect and they're not what they were supposed to be in your mind. And they messed up and they make mistakes because literally they're human and they're men. So that makes it even more difficult. You want revenge because what you thought you were getting is not what you got. You wasted a lot of time, energy, and effort trying to make this man into what you wanted and they never became it. And they might have wronged you in some way in your mind. And now you want to take it out on them because you trusted blindly because you gave multiple chance after chance, because you ignored the red flags, because you took them and tried to change them from what they already were, because you thought that, you know, they were going to be better than what they already were. You thought they were going to change for you. You thought they wouldn't do that. You thought they would never do this. You thought they would never do that. And they proved you wrong in everything you thought. So now you are taking it personally, saying, this person did this to me. No, this person was only this person that you invited into your life and said, I can change them. I can make them better. They're not going to do that to me. I'm going to ignore that red flag because A, B, C, D. You invited them to destroy whatever you feel like they destroyed. You did it. Not them. They only did what you allowed them to do to you. They only did what you allowed them to do to you. And you cooked and cleaned and had the every meal on the table every day and they gave you nothing in return. That's why you're mad at Walla Bench. If you stayed faithful, cooked, clean, did their laundry, and they were unfaithful, that's why you want revenge, because you gave more than what you received. You want revenge, like if they get someone else pregnant because you're out, you know, because they're cheaters and you never thought your man would cheat. That's why you want revenge. Because you thought, oh, I'm special. He ain't going to do that to me. And you took a man that don't even have no money and now he got a baby somewhere else. This is why I tell you guys, always get something in your hand. You always leave with more than what you came in with. You will never want revenge if you're always leaving with more. Because you have too much to lose. And you can easily make a smooth transition. You get it? So this is why I teach what I teach. So you don't have to seek revenge. So you don't have to do all those things because you're always going to leave with more or get better, a better person, or you're going to see the red flags before you even accept that person into your life. And you're not going to trust blindly. Okay. We don't trust blindly because we, because we think a man is cute or nice, or anything, that doesn't equal trust. Because they say the right words at the right time and make us feel some sort of way, does not equal trust. And 
And a lot of you women are giving away trust like it's free. It's not free either. Think about this. If you're a woman, nothing about you is free. Repeat that. I'm a woman. Nothing about me is free. Not even my trust. So stop giving it and you won't seek revenge. Well, I trusted you. I never told you you could. That's what he's going to say. I never told you to trust me. Well, I thought you were this. I never told you I was that. You can't, like, especially if you're a picnic, you don't want came up to me. I never pursued you. If you're pursuing men out there, they're, they're not, they're, that's going to be their comeback. I never pursued you. My old Lorena. Sprinkle, sprinkle. Thank you, girl. I appreciate that, Miss Lorena. No, yeah. And, and women who are only focused on getting back at someone who they allow to treat them that way is a waste of time. You're going in a circle. Go get some money. Go, go get in the money circle. Stay out the dust circle and go get in the money circle. Okay. I asked my members to choose the discussion that we were having today. And someone um, suggested that how to get revenge on someone. And I don't believe in getting revenge on men because guess what? Waste of time. Just get money. <laughs> if you have been getting money the whole time, there's no need for revenge. Um, this is why I'm telling y'all ladies, get money. And it's better for the guy, you know, after the relationship. And men, listen, if you continuously give your woman money throughout the relationship and you know you're going to do her dirty and wrong, there's less of a chance that she's going to do something really bad afterwards. So just keep giving the money. <laughs> okay, fashion class, sprinkle, sprinkle, girl. She or you have a meeting with CEO millionaire next week and you want to fund, he wants to fund your business. You want him to fund your business. I don't want to be too noticeable. Any tips? Um, I don't understand this question. Is, is it a romantic meeting? Is it a business meeting? You don't want to be too noticeable? I don't understand what you're asking. So what I'm going to tell you is um, flirting always works, but not overly flirting. Making brief eye contact, smiling, looking good and smelling good. They're going to come to you and ask you what you're, what you're about. Okay. Yeah. Be about your business, but also let them know that you find them somewhat attractive if they're attractive. Because people want to also appeal to you on more than just a business level. They want to feel seen too. So not just for their money. Slaying as always. Thank you, Milagro. Appreciate that. They are resenting a man because they gave him all with no benefits. Exactly, Coco. We don't seek revenge. We get the we get the money while we're in there. <laughs> that way, when we're done, we're done <laughs> and paid. Okay. And a lot of women. Okay, so recently I posted something on my Instagram, and a lot of women got mad. And I didn't post it because I was thinking about it. I I just stole it from someone else who posts my videos and put it on mine when I when I see a good one. I'm stealing my own stuff, right? So they were mad, not because I put like all men cheat. They were mad and in their feelings, in their pick Misha feelings about not all men cheat. Look, ma'am, have you been married to somebody for 30 years, 50 years, and 40 years? They might not cheat on you in the first five years. They might not cheat on you in the first 10 years. But when you oh, hunched over on your walker with tennis balls and they standing up straight in the wreck, but they outfit on and tan and sunglasses because you married someone the same age and worked and built 50 50. And now your poor feminine body is worn down because it wasn't meant to work hard. And their masculine body is still going strong. When you see them type of couples, you know, that man got a sugar baby. You know, he's at the strip club. You know, he's all up on them dating websites. Why are you sitting in a bed rotten? While you up there in, on your couch watching TV because you can't get out much. While you at the hairdresser getting your hair put in rollers and uh, all your hair is gray. This is why I say don't don't deal with the same age man. Them men out there cheating on y'all. What they take you to IHOP to breakfast? They take you to your doctor's appointment and then they say they gotta go play golf. Guess where they at? So when I say all men cheat, I don't mean your man is cheating on you in a relationship right now. Because you're single till you're married. 
I don't even count that as cheating unless you got a ring. And also, I noticed that when women talk in the comments, they will defend their man as if he will never cheat and they will bet their lives on it. But in a in a um, a post where men, they will never defend the woman. The only thing that they're going to list about their woman and why they're, they have a good woman is all their domestic skills. That's all they're going to list about you. Your domestic skills. My woman cook. My woman keep a clean house. My woman is a traditional wife. My woman do this. My, all they're listing is your skills of domestic capacity. They're not taking up for you as an individual, as a person, as a person of moral character. They're, they're not even saying that you're the most beautiful woman in the world. They're not even talking about your looks most of the time. They're talking about what you do for them in your domestic capacity. So when I see ladies taking up for these guys that haven't cheated on them yet, it's, it's nice to see. It's pretty to see. But the key word is yet. And let me tell you something, ladies. If you are, okay, if you know that all men cheat, you're going to be prepared for that. Just like an NBA player's wife, okay? An NBA player's wife go into the situation knowing her man gonna cheat. She go into it. She don't marry him for fidelity. She don't care if he out there cheating on the road because she probably cheating too. So when you get married for money, not fidelity, not for love, not da 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 you already know the deal. You know the deal. So you already make your plans at the same time as probably they make theirs. Anybody married to an athlete? Y'all know. So anybody married to some high profile person, that famous person? That's the deal. You get the money and the lifestyle and do whatever you want. So let me tell y'all, if you feel some sort of way about the thought of whoever you're marrying cheating on you, remember this. They're going to do it whether you agree to it or not. So you might as well get the money, make sure they have money, and plan your life and do what you got to do. All right. Now, if you marry someone much, much older, things are a little bit different <laughs> because usually they will meet you while cheating on whoever they're with. So when I'm telling you things, listen, don't try to pick and, and choose what you hear. Listen to the whole thing. If you're 30, no, if you're 22 years old and you're, and you're going to go date a 50 something year old man or close to 50. Chances are he's cheating on whoever he's with to be with you. Right? So he is a cheater. Period. You know he's a cheater. So what are you? You're a cheater too. <laughs> Think about this. You go in both knowing you cheat and you both agree. Then Everything is open. Everything is out in the open. Look, you a cheater. I'm a cheater. I met you cheating. You cheated. We cheat. We cheaters. <laughs> okay. Because people don't marry for fidelity when they marry for other things. Just let me just letting you know. If you marry for fidelity and you talk blue in the face about your man being faithful, that's great. But not all women and not all men marry for fidelity. I mean, it's nice to have, but that's not the only thing that makes people get married. Okay. So y'all need to understand that when I speak, y'all need to really just wrap your mind around this. I know some of y'all are young and can't fathom this because y'all are with boyfriends and y'all are new to experiencing love and sex and all this kind of stuff. But when you're older and you've had everything that you wanted, when you choose a partner, it doesn't. People don't base it on fidelity if that's not what they're in the relationship for, okay? So, for example, it's like a job. Let's say you get a job as, and you're already rich, but you get a job as 
someone who travels because you want free travel. You're not at that job for a paycheck. You might not even cash the check. You might forget to cash the check or you might not even realize it's in your account. You just got it for the perks and the benefits. So you're not marrying for those things or you're not in a relationship for those things. That's how you practice detachment. That's how you practice building your legacy, your future and um, creating wealth versus poverty. Because as soon as some of y'all ladies, let me tell y'all, some of y'all ladies get with a broke dusty or get with somebody, they cheat, then you run. Now you're broke. I left. I didn't ask for nothing. I just left. Now, now you're broke. Okay. Because he cheated. No matter who you go run, whose ever arms you run into next, they probably going to cheat too. You're going to run from arms to arms to arms because most men cheat. You're going to run from him to him, to him. And you're going to find a pattern. And that pattern is going to be, especially if you're one of the women that go through people's phones, who are always looking, who are always scared, who's always insecure, you're going to find it, ma'am. You go from arm to arm. I've had people from different cultures and countries talking about my man married me and then left the country. And now I can't remarry because he's with somebody else in another country. Yeah. Because in some countries, you got to be married to get some, and all they wanted was some. But here in America, women are not dealing with those type of things. They're marrying for business. They're marrying for money. They're marrying for security. They're marrying for clout. They're marrying for um, legacy and wealth and building themselves from their husband's money. They're not marrying a man who's perfect. And men aren't marrying women who are perfect. So when y'all sit there and tell yourself the fairy tale, my man don't cheat, my daddy never cheat. Were you with your daddy every second of his life? Was you, are you with your man every second of his life? Do you really know what he's doing? Are you, when he turns 60 and you're 60 and y'all don't look nothing alike because you look like his mama now, you think he's going to be 100% faithful then when you wearing a nightgown and granny panties when he can go get a stripper <laughs> or a sugar baby. Y'all are only looking at the now. I'm talking about long term, man. I'm talking about long term. If y'all can keep a man long enough, if y'all can keep a man long enough, or if a man can keep you long enough to marry you and you have decades and decades and decades and decades, you think they're going to be faithful decade after decade? Especially if you work it. Ladies, this is definitely chestnut checkers. Exactly. So what I'm saying to you is you might be in a relationship and your man not, might not be cheating right now. But if you were to be married in 10, 20 years, 30 years down the line, if some, if, you know, if some stripper presented themselves or some uh, uh, sugar baby presented themselves or some younger woman presented themselves or they went up to her like, what happened with me and my husband? Like, I was just minding my business in a bar and. James was married and he came up to me. So am I supposed to believe all men are faithful, especially when he approached me as a married man and lied? Am I supposed to believe that all good guys are, are uh, faithful? No, I don't believe it because every married man that has come up to me and wanted to date me and do all this kind of stuff. It's like there's too many of them. Uh oh, Katina Sprinks. Thank you. Pretty. And to get revenge on anyone, it's like, okay, I knew you, I know you're married. I know this, I know that, I don't care. I know all guys cheat. Why should I not benefit from it? <laughs> okay. Why should you not benefit from it? That's why I say if you catch your man cheating, of course, take all the precautions. I don't know how to spell this out to you guys. Take all the precautions, cut them off in the bedroom, get tested, blah, 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 insert information here. Okay. Then ask for your gift, ask for your money. If you're going, if they want you to stay together. If they want you guys to stay together, ask for a gift. If it's a deal breaker, on to the next. But next time, date richer because you already know what they're going to cheat. All right, let's use common sense instead of being defensive. Let's get paid instead of making excuses for them. Who cares? You can cheat too, ladies.
If you are looking for the advice channel for healthy relationships, fairy tale relationships, it's not this one. This is a reality and getting this money. All right. This is not about no fairy tales. I mean, you can live a fairy tale life. You can create your own fairy tale. But this is not about perfect people in perfect lands and, and perfect behavior. This is reality. Mm -hmm. The reason why some of y'all are so heartbroken and want revenge so bad is because you believe the fairy tale. Oh, Sister George Sparks, how was the purpose of having a man? If you already are self-sufficient, why put yourself at risk? Thank you, girl. Sprinkle, sprinkle. Okay, the purpose is to, to save yours, spend his. Now, if you don't need his and you don't like you have so much more, you don't need his, then you don't really need a man. It's more of a want at that point for companionship. But even if you want one, you should still want one that is able to provide. Get it? So for example, like If you if you're rich and you have a chauffeur, but you like this nice car over here and you you really don't drive a lot. But if you ever want to drive, you have a nice car to drive. It's not it's not ratchet car. It's not a raggedy car. It's not a car that's going to cause you problems. It's a nice, nice car. That's how you choose your men when you don't need them. They still got to have money. Sprinkle, sprinkle. <laughs> All right. Okay. You said otherwise he'll leech off of you. Yeah. And then think about this. If you choose a man lesser than you, if, if they're not doing their thing, making their money, if they're not busy doing something to better themselves, you're going to resent if they're just laying around because they're a man. Okay. What's a ratchet car? Girl, go Google it. Um, What age can you start doing this? When you're legal of age, ma'am. Whenever you're smart enough and tired of dealing with the okie doke, that's when. <laughs> so whenever you, whenever the fairy tale and the false hope and all those things are no longer part of your um, expectation in a relationship, that's the best time. Because a lot of you ladies who are young, Y'all grow up thinking y'all are going to have a fairy tale and a happy ending like a movie. That's only if you make it for yourself. So, for example, you might have a man, you might have a husband or whatever. But if you put all your hopes and dreams of him being a perfect individual um, attached to your happiness, you're going to be very disappointed. So you need to put that into yourself. And make yourself the best version of you, the happiest version of you, and they are the added bonus, not what makes you happy or not, not what lives up to perfection or not, okay? <laughs> because let me tell y'all a secret. If cheating was that bad, it would be against the law. It's not against the law. So you can't, make them act like it's the law. <laughs> there you go. Otherwise, all of them would be in jail. And still cheating in jail where there's no women around. <laughs> so adultery in this country is not against the law. In some other countries, it could be, but not here. <laughs> not in America. It's not against the law. Okay. He said, how do you crush his ego? Call him another man's name. There you go. Call him the wrong name. Okay. You said it is in random states like South Carolina. What is what is what do you do? Get a fine? Mm. 
it's not against the law because men make the laws and they know they'll be in jail. Exactly. Sorry, I clicked the wrong button. <laughs> so, no revenge, Pignetius. Move on and do better. The best revenge is your success, your paper, your ability to level up to the better person, to a better man. That's it. That's your revenge right there. Doing what they didn't think you could do. Leveling up out of their league. That's your best revenge. That's it. The only revenge is self-improvement. The only revenge is getting more money. The only revenge is ignoring them, forgetting about them, and moving on to the part of your life that is better. That's the only revenge. If you still sitting there thinking about revenge to get revenge on some dude, that means you still like them. They still they got to you. They took something from you. You want it back. It means you were dumb enough to give it to them. It means you were desperate enough to stick around. It means you didn't, you gave them blind trust. It means you didn't see the red flags. It means you made a mistake. It means all these negative things about you. And you're going to fester and focus on all those things when you could be using all that energy to improve yourself. That's why I don't do revenge on men because who cares? They're men. They're going to do the same thing to the next change. If all women had focused on revenge, everybody would be trying to get revenge on somebody who did them dirty. And then all men would be just messed up anyway. I don't expect no man to be perfect because I'm not going to be perfect. So how am I going to hold you to what I can't even do? <laughs> sprinkle, sprinkle. Okay. I'm not getting ready to hold a man to what I, I'm not even going to hold up to if, if need be. Sprinkle, sprinkle. Y'all keep forgetting that. Thank you. How do you fix a bad reputation to be a high value woman? I don't care about what people think. That's how. You don't care about what they think. And if you if your life is only focused on being a high value Sorry, y'all. I keep clicking the wrong button. If you're, fo if you're focused on a bad reputation, then move, ma'am. Move. <coughs> we don't really care about that in our culture. <coughs> you can have the worst reputation of men line up to marry you anyway. <coughs> Okay. So move <laughs> or own it, own your reputation. Like, yeah, Ian. <coughs> Sorry, y'all. So. We don't need revenge. We just need better, more. <laughs> mm -hmm. So remember that. I know young women always want revenge because they're, and let me talk to the young ladies for a second. Younger women want revenge because they feel they were taken advantage of. They didn't know any better. And that's why I'm here to tell you don't give too much. If you're not getting even more, you don't give. Okay. You don't give unless you've gotten already. You do not give unless you get. If you're not getting, stop giving. Don't start off giving, start receiving. Women are the receivers. If you're not receiving, then stop giving. Stop, stop, stop. And that means giving your time, giving your trust. Stop giving. Giving your fidelity. Giving all these things that you're not receiving. Stop doing it. 
You can try and try hard and hard to do all of these things. And still, they're not going to care if they're they don't even really want you. Most men in their 20s aren't trying to get married. They're not trying to be in a long term relationship. They're trying to go do as much as they can. So for you to think that way at an early age, young ladies, is defeating your 20s, defeating the purpose of your 20s. Your 20s are to learn, to grow, to see what you want and what you don't want. And you need to learn those lessons <clears throat> and move on and stop wallowing in your mistakes that you are supposed to make. All I say is don't get pregnant and protect yourself because those guys in their 20s, they're not trying to be husbands and fathers. So stop trying to make them into them. Oh, French Francesca. Um, you help me learn how to control your emotions so I can land a rich man. Now these dusties can't approach me and I'm all about my money. Thank you. Yes, Francesca. Sprinkle, sprinkle. Let, repeat after me, ladies. Men in their 20s don't want to be husbands and fathers. Repeat after me, young ladies. Say it with me loud. Men in their 20s don't want to be fathers and husbands yet. They're too young. They want to go and do whatever they want. They're not ready, not even mature mentally yet. So stop trying to make them. Stop it. If you want marriage and children, go date an older man. They're ready. They're financially ready, mentally ready, and so forth. Stop trying to tie men down with a baby unless they're a millionaire. <coughs> OK. Nobody wants your dusty. You ain't got to tie him nowhere. Nobody wants your 20 something year old. For money. Stop trying to tie these dudes down and men stop trying to tie women down so you can have free sex and shelter whenever you feel like coming back to them. All you're going to do is accumulate bad credit and rack up child support you can't afford. Instead of all these women trying to seek revenge on these guys and men talking trash about women, understand this one thing. In your 20s, men aren't ready for marriage or children. They're just not. You can force it on them, but they're not ready for it. Back in the old days, let me tell you all something. Back in the old days, people got married young and had children young because the average age expectancy was like 35 because they didn't have cures for diseases or certain medications. Now you can wait a little bit longer. Just because your mama and your grandma had kids at 20, 21 does not mean you have to. You can wait. Okay. Sure, this man was supposed to reschedule our date, but he has, girl, I'm not worried about somebody who's not reaching out. I'm only worried about people who like me way more. And that's how you do it. If they don't like you enough to do all of that, dismissed. Sprinkle, sprinkle. Don't reach out to no man. Dismissed. They, they failed the test, ma'am. They didn't like you way more. They failed the test, period. Don't be desperate. <laughs> Did you meet them online? I told y'all stop meeting men online. Oh, they just got a better offer, ma'am. Okay. <clears throat> uh oh, cocoon, sprinkle, sprinkle. But older men don't look at me seriously. You're on, well, do you with the wrong, then you in the wrong place, ma'am. Go stop looking, stop looking so young. You know what I'm saying? Sprinkle, you got to dress more uh, uh, mature. Don't do too many trends. Don't look like, don't look like you're 23. You know what I'm saying? So more sophisticated if you're trying to catch an older guy. Like, let me tell y'all, when I'm trying to tell y'all, when I was 22 and I met James, I was in a suit, a business suit with heels. I wasn't in no club clothes or no going out clothes. I was in a business suit, looking like I was standing on business. <laughs> so, and the reason for that is because where I was going, but honestly. Dress like you want the attention of someone older, not someone younger. 
Because think about this. If you're a so if you're an old man, you don't want to be walking next because they're gonna think you're his daughter. If you're dressed in the latest trends and looking like, you know, somebody's niece or daughter, you gotta look like you belong on their arm, which means dressing more mature. Okay. Did I dress like that on purpose? Yeah, because I was going to the funeral home. I was getting ready to go to my funeral home where I used to work and volunteer with my old boss because I was bored because I had quit my other job. See, I used to be a mortician. So, you know, we have to dress in black suits all the time. So I was dressed in a black suit, skirt suit, and I was getting ready to go, but I was killing some time in a bar before I went. And that's when I was approached by Mr. James, who was married. <laughs> <laughs> but a doubt let that stop me no anyway <laughs> if I were dressed in the latest trends for a 22 year old my own age I don't know if he would approach oh Chrissy Spr Sprinkle so if a man got $3,800 Chanel purse sitting in his closet that has been there since 2003 based on receipt and you've been dealing with him for two years. Any advice, girl? Did he buy the purse for you? I'm taking the purse. Sprinkle, sprinkle. I thought that was mine. I took it. Do you live there with him? Borrow it. To say it matched, I borrowed it. I didn't think it was your purse. Is it your purse? <laughs> he probably took it back from some other chick when she wouldn't put out. Just take it, girl. He was like, I thought you bought that for me. I found it. I found your surprise. If he doesn't know that you know it's there, I can play dumb. It's like, I found your surprise. Thank you so much. I really love it. If you if he knows that you know it's there, just say it went with my shoes. I borrowed it. I put it back. Just girl, just take it. If you if you sleeping with that man, take that purse. All right. If you sleeping with that man, go get your purse. Y'all acting dumb over here. Why y'all asking me stupid questions? If are you sleeping with him? Did you sleeping with him? That's your purse then. All right. If you sleeping with that man, that's your purse. Period. Especially if he ain't giving you no money or paying no bill. That's yours. Help yourself. How to handle dating two men who run in the same circle and may find out you don't. Sprinkle, sprinkle. Unless they both know and they don't care. Sprinkle, sprinkle. <laughs> Let me see. Have I ever done that? Let me think. Kind of, but not really. Nothing serious. So I wouldn't do that. It's too complicated. Just go to a different side of town, ma'am. Sure, he sends me money, but always ask me to let him know I can buy you lunch. Just let me know how can I get him to just send it randomly without having to ask. Tell him you like surprises that are attached to cash. Sprinkle, sprinkle. I like surprise cash apps. I like surprises that are attached to cash. It really turns me on. Tell them you're fasting and uh, just send you some money. <laughs> uh oh, baby, sprinkle, sprinkle. You ended up blocking everywhere. Your rich sugar daddy, he's 62. You're 32 because you wasn't fully paying your bills, claiming it's only three months. Was I too emotional? First of all, I'm not blocking no guy unless they're bothering me. You should just have another guy to pick up his slack until you can fully replace him. If you're being emotional and trying to control him by blocking him and things like that, it's like you become a child and playing a game. Just ignore him and go out on other dates. Don't have to block him. 
Because when he decides to act right, then he'll definitely let you know when he's ready to pay them bills and if or not, or he can move on. But when you block people and play these games, if they're um, not doing what you want, it's very childish and you don't really need to block them. You just need to go do something else. And when they're ready, when they come to their senses, they know how to contact you and they can give you your money. Okay. I'm not blocking no money, period. If, you, if that man giving you any type of money, I'm not blocking it. I'm just going to go get more elsewhere at the same time. That makes no sense to me. Think about this. If you have two businesses and one is not giving you as much money as the other one, but you can afford to keep both of them open because one of them might start giving you the money. It's just a matter of time. Why would you close one business? Why would you block your, why? It doesn't make sense. Get both. I'm getting both. Y'all are too limited in your thinking. Just because you can't control a man don't mean to cut off your money. I'm not trying to control nobody. I'm trying to get this money from every direction. If he cuts himself off and blocks you, then you know he's not about to give you nothing. But leave the doors open to get the money. Stop acting over emotional because you can't get your way right then and there. OK, he might say it's only been three months. OK, so go date other guys at the same time and get money from them, too. And when he's when three, two months, five months, then maybe he'll be able to pay all your bills. But you can't control a grown man. All you can do is just go get someone who's going to do what that one won't. OK, I'm not trying to sit here and work hard on no man. I'm trying to sit here and get what I need to get, whether it's from him or them. Uh oh, Wonder Woman, babe, Sprinkle Sprinkle. You're still confused about we have to be mean part since we also have charming and feminine. You can be both at the same time. Y'all don't know how to be nice and nasty? Go watch Southern Women. Southern Women are, are very good at being nice and nasty. You need to be nice, nasty, and feminine. Okay, May, Sprinkle Sprinkle. Thank you, girl. Study Southern Women, how they act. Go watch some TV shows with a bunch of Southern women in it. They are nice, nasty, and feminine, and they get what they want. Somebody said mean girls. <laughs> how can you get your man to commit before you being physical? When he commits to all your bills, ma'am. That's how you get a real man to commit, when he commits to them bills. Get him to pay your bills for a few months. And, and give you some money to put, put in your savings account, ma'am. That's commitment to me. Words don't mean nothing. I need some money. Oh, mad life, sprinkle, sprinkle. Investment is commitment. You know, when you sign to buy a car, they want you to put a down payment, right? And then sign some papers. That investment is your commitment to pay them bills every month and that you are going to buy that car. So without no down payment, Without no investment, there is no connections. Oh, Ayana, sprinkle, sprinkle. Sure, you got to provide a man, but he stank, bad breath, and poor hygiene. He is not attractive, but pays my rent and bills. Should I girl, get you some air freshener, some incense, some Vicks Vapor Rub, put it up under your nose when you're around him? Get Make him a little Dollar Tree gift basket with all the hygiene products that he need to be using. And gift it to him, girl. I saw you were running low on some of these things. <laughs> sprinkle, sprinkle. Uh -huh. <laughs> yes. What? what? Tell, suggest he go swimming. Get you some peppermint schnapps. Y'all have a toast. It tastes like mouthwash. Then tell him y'all you won't go swim in the chlorine pool. <laughs> Uh oh, Miss May, thanks for being a member. I appreciate you. 
Uh oh, baby, sprinkle, sprinkle. Thank you. I blocked him because I was tired of pretending to go to work at a nightclub. Him saying he was really concerned, but not doing anything. Exactly. Whenever you get talkers and not givers, just delete them. If they talk more than they give, that waste of time. All right. When a man asks you out on a date drinks on Tuesday night, how should I give him a message? Be back the reservations. Details confirmation. Okay, here if someone says drinks Tuesday night, it's like, no thanks. I prefer dinner and dates if I'm gonna get all dressed up. <laughs> Uh, then I'll say, text me the details when you come up with a date. I'm not getting ready to go no drinks on no Tuesday night. You're a bad spring sprinkle. That's called happy hour. You can go do that by yourself. Sure, what to do about pick me who support drizzle, drizzle. That girl, I don't care about no pick me. She's girl, spring sprinkle. They have to defend their dust in some way to keep them. Okay, look, all women at some point who are pygmesia got to defend their dust. They think everybody wants their dusty girl. They don't realize ain't nobody want no broke man except pygmesias. So what they're doing is they're, fin they're, they're defending their dusties and protecting their dusties against other pygmesias that want them. Has nothing to do with us. Okay, why should... Some men complain. Why do some men complain about having to be the ones to reach out to women first and want the woman to reach out to make effort to because they want to feel wanted? So every time you reach out, make sure it's for some money. Sprinkle, sprinkle. Uh oh, Shani, so that they don't ask you that no more. How do you ask a man to pay your rent long term? Ask them to ask them to put you on a direct deposit for the amount. Twice the amount your rent is. Okay. It's like, the pick Mishas will defend they dusty and fight another pick Misha for a dusty. That's not our problem. We're not making it our problem today. Okay. We don't care. That's them. You said I missed your super chat? Hold on. How to motivate. After Rich Sugar Daddy said he doesn't want to continue because of his wife. Go get another one, ma'am. Sprinkle, sprinkle. Okay, if you kind of miss him, go find one that remind him of you, of him. Girl, I, I, don't, I don't know what to tell y'all. When I was younger, I would be like so happy when I, it was an opportunity to find a better one. Because I knew I could. You got to have self-confidence. Be like, oh, it's time to find a better one, okay? See what kind of card we can get this time. I mean, kind of man we can get this time. <laughs> it's to play a game. We drive through the parking lots and see if we can get the man to the car. Go have fun with your life. Stop making it so serious. Go get another one. One week you driving in a Lamborghini. Next week you in a Maserati. Next week you in a G-Wagon, what, what you doing, man? You better go have fun and stop making this so serious. Go get another one. Girl. Somebody said, what? Toyota Prius. No, no, no. So when you're when you're feeling a certain way, just go make it fun. I don't care. Like go out and it's a numbers game. I know some of you, I know this era, people are staying in their house and watching Netflix and all this kind of stuff and ordering DoorDash. In my day, we didn't have none of that. That's why we met all these dudes, because we were out all the time. There was nothing better to do than to be out and about and having fun. Okay. We were out. That's how we got the money. We got like, okay, that dude has money. Okay, that parking lot is full of luxury vehicles. Let's go to that place. Okay, let's go to the rich side of town tonight. Every night was a different place. Go out. 
It's a numbers game. Go. Be seen. Oh, Kim Sprinkle Sprinkle, how do you get a man to stay interested during combos online? Don't talk to him online that much. Get him on the phone or um, if they're, especially if they got money in their pain. Talk to him for five minutes and then hang it up and leave him wanting more. Okay. Okay. They stop responding or they just want to pay per meets, meaning get off of line. What are y'all? Okay. Go out in the real world, ma'am. Sprinkle, sprinkle. Go drive, get, get in your car. Go drive to the rich side of town and lunchtime or the evening. Look for restaurants that have valet parking. Look all up through that valet parking up in the front. Look at them luxury vehicles. Get yourself out. Go to that restaurant. Sit at the bar. Okay? Go there. That's where you go. Get offline. All right? Find somewhere where they have expensive drinks on the rich side of town. Go there for lunch. Go there for dinner, go there for happy hour, and get off them stupid websites online. Okay? You're going to meet men with real money up over there. You ain't going to have to sift through the dust. Okay? Get up and go. All right. Think about this. You don't have to wait for somebody to text you details for where their date is. You're going to be out already and they're going to approach you, buy your drink, have a conversation, then invite you on a real date. They're going to have real chemistry. You're going to exchange real information. Uh oh, thank you, Lorena. Your baby daddy provides, but I found out he talks to other women and I ended things with him once I found another provider. Baby daddy got jealous and wants to be my sole provider again. Tell him to be your sole husband. Sprinkle, sprinkle. All right. When you saying baby daddy, you need to change that to hood. If he can't change your title from baby mama to wife, then don't have nothing to do with him. He can still, he can still pay his child support. Sprinkle, sprinkle. But this is what I'm saying. He's, he's only for child support. At this time, if you want to make you a wife and provide fully, that's a whole nother story. Don't get back with no baby daddy. If you're not getting back with me to marry me, then move along, sir. I can get married. You can get married faster with some other dude. Get it? Stop. Stop taking that crap from men when you can when you hold all the power. You can be jealous all you want. You put a ring on it if you like it. If you don't like it. Move along. I don't see why y'all women don't demand marriage in the first place. <laughs> you can get his child support, the new provider's money, and a chance to actually marry somebody. Where would you, where should us ladies meet rich men if we are under 21? You know, the bars are commonplace. Okay, places on the rich side of town that don't require an ID. Run your errands over there. Go jogging in the parks over there. Go to the gyms over there, okay? Any place but a bar. Go to the restaurants and sit in the bar, but don't sit at the bar. You can still do that at, at 18. Okay. If you go to a restaurant, there's always a bar and then seats and tables near the bar. You can sit at those. Okay, you just can't order drinks or you can't sit up at the bar. Okay. Mm -mm -mm. I, I'm going alone or with someone very like minded that's, you know, not going to be an issue. Should I lie that I see a future with him or for him to spend? Yeah, girl, lie to get him to spend. Sprinkle, sprinkle. They all lie to get you to lay down. So lie to get them to spend. Doesn't matter. If you say you lie and see in the future with him, that means you just lie and see him in the future. You see him in the future, but he's going to live. <laughs> okay. He said he has money but wants to give him for it. That's called credit. Are you in the credit card business, ma'am? You into giving out loans? 
and hope people pay you back, then that's you. Okay? You get you get, you into giving people credit and loans. Good for you. Okay. Does that answer your question? He said a future of him spending money. Okay. He said I missed your super chat. Okay, hold on. My bad. Mm. The worst part is that according to him, he was super obsessed and never felt like that for years. They, that's a lie, man. Picture the future with me, but still let me go. Okay, then it's called a lie. Men lie all the time. And whether you choose to believe them or not is literally up to you. I don't care what they say. What are their actions? Their actions are to tell the truth and reinforce the truth. If their actions ain't matching up with their words, they're lying. That's how you know a man is lying, when his actions don't match his words. Action don't match words. Therefore, words are lies because actions are seen with your own two eyes. So one plus two equals three. He lied. Okay. He might have had a believable lie, but it was still a lie. Uh oh, mad lights. Sprinkle, sprinkle. Hold on. Let me see. Yeah. Thank you. There's nothing written in yours. It just says $4.99. But thank you, girl. Did, nothing came across in yours. Okay. Broke men are useless to your... Yeah. Where did you get money mindset from? Um... When I graduated from the fairy tale um, version of what life is supposed to be. So when you're young, they teach you go for true love. But do they teach men that? Do they teach men to go for true love? They don't. Why do they teach women to go for true love? Because true love is free. <laughs> and cheap. When they start teaching men to go for true love, then we'll talk. Sprinkle, sprinkle. What they do show in fairy tales is that the, the man is a prince and he has money. If you're going to live a part of the fairy tale, live that part. Okay. Of course, the princess fell in. Uh, of course, the woman fell in love with the prince. He's rich. Of course, they got married in one day. He got money. Believe in that part. Don't believe in the part where true love and it's meant to be. And girl, he's a prince. He got money. Go get it. Uh oh, Susie Q, Sparkle Sparkle, your husband betrayed you, begged you to stay when he was acting perfect, cooking, cleaning, shopping for me, but now stopped. How do I get him to go back to that? Um, ask him what happened. Say, what happened? You're not cooking today? Get dressed and go take yourself out to eat by yourself. Sparkle Sparkle. He's not cleaning. Say, oh, are you going to hire a maid service? He's not shopping. Say, oh, I guess we don't need food this week. And don't do anything about it. Uh oh, he'll figure it out. You caught your provider cheating. He sent you money to apologize, but you want a date. You want to date other men. He raised my expectations on dating. It's hard for me to date other men. How do I find someone better? The same way you found him. Go out. It's a numbers game. Go to the rich side of town and be seen. That's literally it. Alana, sprinkle, sprinkle. Thank you, girl. Date him and the other ones that are interested. Having problems with men. Proposing dinner dates, but not solidifying plans. That's because you're meeting online. Sprinkle, sprinkle. Get out. Get off the computer and go into the real world. Okay. 
Stop meeting guys online. Because let me tell y'all, I keep telling y'all this. A man tells you he wants a date. He's not going to solidify plans because there's a better one waiting around the corner or the swipe. He finds someone better looking than you that he wants to be seen out in public with. You're not going to get a call back. You're, you're a placeholder until he finds the better looking one. Okay. So get offline, go in the real world. Y'all know this, right? Y'all understand this, right? Y'all understand that he found a better looking one that he wants to be seen out in public with. So he's not going to call you back. So go into the real world where men aren't able to do that. They see you, they like you, you got chemistry, you exchange numbers, you talk, you get you get their real interest and they think it's more authentic because they met you in person, not online. They take you more seriously. You're not a placeholder at that time. So yes, go outside, darlings. Get offline with these men. All they're going to do is look for your upgrade. And if they find it, you're not going to get a call back. Okay. Because I know if I were a man, I'd do the same thing. I'm not calling her back. I found a better looking one. Just like if, if you found a richer guy, you're not going out the broke one. So get offline. Okay. I literally, like, if I find somebody way richer, the other one ain't getting no call back. He getting blocked and... I'm never talking to him again. So when y'all meet guys online, that's the same thing they're doing to you, but with looks. Okay. What if they don't approach you at the bar? It doesn't matter. You're there to enjoy your time and yourself. And if someone approaches you, they approach. If they don't, they don't. Remember, it's not about quantity, it's about quality. So I know a lot of you ladies are used to going to the dusty places and 27 dusties approaching you with no money. I'd rather wait and be patient and have one man approach that's going to give me everything. Get it? Y'all remember this. Going from dust, dust dating to higher end dating. It's very different. Okay. Men are not as desperate. They don't need shelter. They don't need your credit. They don't need none of that. So when 27 Dusties approach you at the Dusty Bar, you feel good. You feel confident about a Dusty approaching you. Great. But think about this you go to a high end place, you may take a couple times, but eventually, Someone is going to approach you and they're going to have what you want. Go to the rich side of town. How many times do I got to repeat this? How many times? I need to learn the sign language of go to the rich side of town. Mm -hmm. Oh, neat. Beat. Sparkle, sparkle. Thank you. NB, NB. I don't know how to pronounce that. I don't know if that's initials or what. Y'all get go to the rich side of town. Run your errands over there. Join the gym over there. Go to lunch over there. Go to happy hour over there. Go walk your dog over there. Go jog over there. Go do something over there. Every day or every other day. Get over there. You're not going to meet broke people on the rich side of town. There you go. You say he's 47, doesn't feel old, and believes he's, okay, he's about to hit his midlife crisis. Start talking about how he's almost 50. He's about to hit that midlife crisis, all right? You can get more out of him when you just call him 50 or close to 50. How does it feel to almost be a half a century old? Ask him about things that happened in his day before you were born. It's going to bring some perspective. Sure, you're attractive, but how you have a scar 
and don't want to wear bangs anymore because it covers my facial features. Do you think it's yeah? But, um, it depends on what the scar looks like and if you can hide it with makeup. Um, if not, you know, try to wear it your bangs and then try to wear it without and see what type of responses you get. You know, you're probably going to get a lot of questions more likely or people are just going to stare at it. So I don't know. Do it. Do what gets the most. Like I would lure them in and then make them, you know, hooked and then show them the scar. Because I mean, what are they going to do? It's like, I don't like you anymore because of the scar. It's too late. They like you already. It's just a little bit of added character now. I mean, wear different hairstyles. You don't have to always wear bangs. You can wear different hairstyles, swoop bang, you know, whatever. How to get and keep a bag in marriage with a Muslim man? He's no, there's no child support property division. Move, sparkle, sparkle. Move to where there is property and child support custody. And <laughs> move. That's how. First of all, I'm not going to set myself up for failure with no man. So I'm moving <laughs> instead of staying in a place that does not respect women. You know what I'm saying? That's what I'm going to do. Okay. I'm not having nobody's kids in the country where they don't respect women. I'm not married in a country where they don't respect women. I'm not even going to a country that don't respect women. All right. So when I say, I'm sorry, I can't help you. And I tell you to move. I mean, it. <laughs> sprinkle, sprinkle. If you're stuck, then get you a passport, man. Work on that passport and get unstuck. All right, let's see. Let's see if I missed something. Okay, Dion says, you wanna make sure to bring up the conversation of being in your provider man, how to start of bring the conversation. Tell them you only date provider man. You've only dated provider man in the past. That means you ain't gonna change right now. Sure, having problems with men proposing dinner date. Okay, I already read that one. Tell them you only date provider men. You don't date nothing else. Period. That's how. Okay. He says you're, you married your husband as a provider. You have a biz house before marriage. Plan to leave because of how he treats you. Afraid to leave because you don't know if he'll try to get money from you. Biz, should you get another man first? You're 27. Um, honestly, sell your business. <laughs> or... Put it in someone else's name to get a partner and put a percentage of it in their name and give yourself 1%. And make sure it's someone you trust, like your mother or your sister, <laughs> somebody. And then go. Sparkle, sparkle. All right. That's all you got to do, girl. What the heck? Oh, Patricia, sprinkle, sprinkle. Do you have to move in with him after he proposes he's loaded but lives on a farm 20 minutes from town? Um, Probably. Did he propose with a nice diamond ring? Um, is he giving you an allowance? Do you have a nice car to drive to and from town? Make sure you get everything you want before you move in. Do you still have to work? Okay. You get cell phone reception out there. All these things. How to get and keep a bad carrier. I read that one. What to do if sugar daddy is provider, but name calling. Name call him, girl. Spring, spring. Find him a, a nasty nickname. Find him a nasty nickname, girl. Okay. Can we take revenge from relatives? Um, if they if they 
did something illegal to you, you can just call the authorities. I'm not getting ready to take revenge on anybody because it's a waste of time. I'm getting ready to go get more money from someone else or make more money by myself. I'm not getting ready to put all my energy and focus on someone that I don't care about. <laughs> okay. If you don't care about something, why put your energy there? Stop caring and you won't even be focused on revenge. You'll be focused on yourself. When you are a selfish person and you focus on yourself and you make yourself a priority, revenge is stupid because it's a waste of your time given to someone else. If you want the satisfaction of making them regret whatever they did, get money. <laughs> okay? Because if someone wanted to do you wrong, the worst thing that they can ever experience is you getting more and uh, than they ever thought you would and getting better than they ever thought you would get. That's the only revenge you need to seek. Everything else means you're still thinking about them and focused on them. Everything else means that you still want them in some type of way or you, you can't get over them in some type of way. Girl, go get your money and get another one and stop focusing. And if it's family members, separate yourself from the family and go succeed in life. Okay. That's it. Okay. Sharon, I've answered your question a thousand times. Do you have a credit card company? Do you give out loans to people? If the, if the answer is no, why would you give out anything before you get your money? Sharon, the answer is no, ma'am. No. No. Unless you like giving out loans that will never be repaid. <laughs> if you repay them, would you repay a loan if you didn't have to? Sprinkle, sprinkle. Sprinkle, sprinkle. Okay. Um, you rejected him by saying, maybe next time I'll give you my number, but now I know he earns much money. What shall I do when I see him again? Smile and say hello and see if he wants that number still. When you don't act desperate, a man value, values you more. When you see him again, smile and say, hey. Like you, like you recognize and remember him. If he wants you, he'll come get you. Never chase. Okay. A lot of men have money. Shoot. He asked me to put all my money in a shared bank. Hell no. I would be laughing at him. It's like, no thanks. All my money is $10. Here you go. And keep your money where it belongs in your own account. <laughs> there you go. Put ten dollars on it and that's never put nothing on it again. Okay, Lorena, you were introduced to a very wealthy man with two yachts, dated a bit, then what? Created fake problem. He said no to the money, cut cut him off. Now is best. But he keeps calling saying he got sent by him. How, how do I get money? Huh? Um, say, oh, you know, I really don't have time to date. I'm trying to figure out a financial issue right now. I, I'm really trying to like do it again. Like be about your money, not about being rich men's arm candy. If they're not paying, they're not staying. Be about your money always until you find one that will give you money. OK, just because they're rich don't mean they're spending. Okay. A lot of men think just because they're rich, they don't have to spend. So get rid of those real quick. If they're not spending, they can't stay. Okay. So when the other one calls, you say, you know what? I was just trying to figure out how I was going to solve this problem. Can you help me? Okay. Okay. Well, really, I can't talk right now, but I would love to see you until when I figure out this problem. I'll let you know when I figure it out. It's financial. If you would like to help, I definitely will be able to, uh, you know, talk to you much sooner, but until then, I'm so sorry. Dismiss them quickly if they're not about helping you or giving you money. 
Because otherwise, they're just going to use you as arm candy until you realize you ain't getting no money. Okay, sprinkle, sprinkle. Um, you said provider won't leave you alone. You broke over him. He verbally abused you, and now he also cheats on me. Okay, well, he he left you alone when you when uh y'all broke up. If he keeps bothering you, send him cash apps to make him. If you if he wants you to respond to his text, tell him to text you in cash app. Every time he try to talk to you, it's gonna cost him. It's like I don't want to talk to you unless you're paying me. So here's my cash app. Every time you want to send me a message, send it through there. And I'm not messaging you back. So you just better have a conversation with my cash app until it's enough for me to even want to talk to you again. <laughs> okay. Your provider's asking you for a threesome. Okay, bring another man. Sprinkle, sprinkle. Let's see what he do. Okay, I'm down with that. Let me go get me a man. Another man. What type you like? Tall, dark, handsome? What kind? Black, white, Asian? That's the only threesome I'm having, sir. And if y'all get a little too close, I'm leaving y'all alone. <laughs> okay, you bring another man. What the heck? Threesome could go a different way. Like, okay, I never thought you'd ask. Let me call the uh, such and such up. Okay, uh, this might sound strange, but would you be down for a threesome? None of them know it's another man. Neither of them know. When y'all show up, it's like one woman, two men. They're going to be looking at each other like, oh, it's going to be very awkward. And then you're going to be like, which one's first? And then they're going to both leave and get the point that you ain't about that life. Okay? That's all. Set them up. Like I'm not about that life, but if y'all want to be. But Dusty broke up with you good for you, ma'am. Congratulations. What if he buys perfume on first date? Good for you. You got some perfume. Uh -uh. Mm -mm -mm. Shira, because of you, I managed to ask for money for the first time, but it's too little. You always ask for twice as much than what you really need. Okay, y'all write that down. Ask for twice as much than you really need, and then you'll get more. Oh, Kim, Shira, what is the plan Georgina did to win Cristino Rolando's heart, and what type of work should we get men like that? Okay. You mean on Gossip Girl? Girl, she did a spell on him. Can't you tell she's a witch? Sprinkle, sprinkle. <laughs> that wasn't obvious. Okay. <laughs> anyway. Y'all better be glad I watched that show because I would have not. Oh, hey, beautiful sprinkle, sprinkle. Thank you. I think that's what you're referring to. Somebody said she worked at Gucci. <laughs> Girl, I don't know. <laughs> I don't know who these people are. I'm thinking about Gossip Girl. Y'all, do y'all remember Georgina's husband on Gossip Girl? He did whatever she told him to do. That's what I was talking about. Okay. Girl, don't don't tell me people's I don't I don't watch soccer. <laughs> I watch I watched gossip girl. I don't watch no soccer. Do I look like I watch sports? 
I don't know who these people are. <laughs> but anyway, go watch Gossip Girl, um, the episodes with Georgina and her husband. <laughs> uh, Ma'am, we don't know soccer players. I don't know them. <laughs> Probably witchcraft still, okay? Sprinkle, sprinkle. All right. <laughs> she probably made him some spaghetti. All right. Sprinkle, sprinkle. All right. If, you ever, if a man ever tell you to cook for him, cook him from some spaghetti around that time of the month. That's the only time you cook, ma'am. Let's see what he gonna do. Go back to the super chat. Oh, Talisa, thank you. Sure. Okay, okay. Let's see Chloe. I already answered these questions. Okay, I already answered these questions. Y'all gotta listen. Okay, I already answered most of those, y'all. Okay. What? The secret sauce? <laughs> Yeah, girl. If you don't feel like cooking spaghetti, just order some and sprinkle, sprinkle. All right. But oh, girly, thank you. Sprinkle, sprinkle. Go order some from the Italian restaurant from DoorDash and then sprinkle, sprinkle your own ingredients. Just kidding. <laughs> we'll never know. He wanted me to come, what? To NYC for an expensive date, but ask if I can take the girl now. Sparkle, sparkle. If you got to put that much effort into going to see some man, he's not worth it. I ain't doing all that, girl, no. I'm, if you want princess treatment, you act like a princess. You don't hop trains and travel far for no man. Okay, They got to come to you. Or they got to make sure you get there in royal fashion. Okay. I'm going to take you on an expensive date if you just hop a train and get here. I'm not going there. I go on an expensive date right here. Or you could send me a limo. I ain't getting ready to do that, ma'am, sir. Had a guy get upset with me when I told him I don't meet for coffee or drinks. Dust free era. Good for you, T. Sprinkle, sprinkle. Let him know. Uh, they're going to get mad, but you're not going to waste your time, are you? They should get mad that they were stupid enough to ask you that. I, I would be mad. I would be madder than the man. I'd be like, why are you wasting your time asking me a question? You already know the answer is going to be no. Would you like to meet for coffee? No, thanks. I don't do coffees. Waste of my time. My perfume, two sprays of my perfume cost more than a coffee. So sorry. Got to go. What do you think about blackmailing a cheating husband? For what? To get money out? You don't blackmail them. You just tell them that you're not going to forgive them unless they give you what you want. It's not really blackmail. It's them buying your forgiveness. Okay. <laughs> 
See, forgiveness costs these days. It's not given freely. Trust costs these days. It's not given freely. Everything that has to do with a woman costs money. It's not given freely. Not anymore. It was free for a long time. Most of y'all gave y'all selves away for free. Most of y'all trusted people and gave y'all trust free. It was dust free air. Nothing is free anymore. They had the chance. They failed when stuff was free. Now it's, it costs money. And it's inflation. So blame it on inflation. Okay. They pay extra for everything else. Okay. Why are you? Why are you at the discount? They got to pay extra for food, gas, everything else. Why? Why aren't your prices going up? Why are you settling for bean juice at the coffee shop? Why? Why are you taking offense to someone getting mad because they can't afford you? They can't afford you. They don't need to be dating. Okay. You said guacamole is extra. He's sinning less than before and giving excuses what to do. Talk to him less. Whatever he's sinning, reduce whatever you're doing. Don't answer his texts. Leave him on red. Don't answer his calls. Just text him. Um, I'm figuring out how to get the rest of the money that I need. That's all you text him. Until he sends it to you. How do I get a man to spend without me having to ask? Take him to the mall, hold his hand, and drag him into all the stores. Pick out the clothes and go to the counter with him and smile. If he pull out his wallet and, and, and pay for it, great. If not, leave the clothes right where they are. Look, Apologize to the clerks. I'm so sorry. I thought he was paying. <laughs> and walk out. How to deal with men's jealousy. Ask for marriage. Sprinkle, sprinkle. If he, he can't be jealous of you, if he ain't got no ring on it, man. It's like, well, if you're so jealous, why don't you just put a ring on it and marry me? I like this many carrots and this cut of diamond. Otherwise, I'm single till I'm married. You can't afford to be jealous if you can't afford no ring. <laughs> If you fear me finding a better one, then put a ring on it and, and put some money in my account. That'll ward them off for a little while. <laughs> okay. How do I get men to approach me and give me what I want? By looking good and going to the right places, the rich side of town and looking good, man. And they will approach if they're interested. You can't make anybody do anything. You got to lure them in. <laughs> you say your provider is 53 and you're 28. You're, he's always comparing you with other women that, and that they desire. Girl, he's trying to make himself look appealing to you, ma'am. Oh, Daisha, sprinkle, sprinkle. Ask how long to wait before he spends. Can you go? Back? Okay. Um, it should at least be by the third or third date at the longest. He should be spending money by then. Okay. Gifts or something. Third date, ma'am. You waited longer than that. He don't he think you dating for fun, not funds. How to deal, how to level up after a breakup. Look good. Don't go out your house looking crazy and go to the nice side of town and date men only for money. Sprinkle, sprinkle. That's how. Get serious about it. Okay. Uh, 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 uh. You said your opinions on men that beat their wives and throw money at as a temporary apology. Hmm. Um, well, when you go in the kitchen to cook, you can get your revenge. Even though this says don't get revenge, you can cook up something that's going to 
taste gonna feel like revenge when they go to the bathroom. All right, and, and take the money and while in the bathroom, leave. Okay. <laughs> So you can get in that kitchen and cook something that's going to feel like revenge while they're on the toilet and you can go take your money and leave. Take pics, send it to his mother. Here you go, mom. Happy Mother's Day. Do all the wrong stuff that you ain't supposed to be doing. Take a picture of whatever he's doing. Send it to his mother for Mother's Day. It's like you were happy Mother's Day from... Such and such. You've raised such a good, delightful son. And then while he's in the bathroom, go spend the money he threw at you. Put your sunglasses on. And if he do it again, increase the dose. Sprinkle, sprinkle. <laughs> okay. What to ask for as gifts when seeing them after some time? Whatever you want. If it's been a long time, probably not something great, like super expensive, maybe somewhere in the mid range. But if he really, really likes you, ask for what you want. Oh, Desiree, you're 30. Is 37 too young for a 30 year old woman? Girl, no man in their 30s. It's, if you're in your 30s, I'm not taking you seriously. Sorry, you're not trying to get married. Maybe closer to 39 and 40 something, they may be contemplating marriage in their head at that point. But just to date and get money from, it doesn't matter their age as long as they're giving you money. But if you're contemplating long term relationships or marriage, don't take a 30 something year old seriously for marriage. Just take them seriously for if they're going to pay them bills and give you some money. Okay. Mm -mm. what's the mindset to say you don't owe him nothing after he gives you money because it's optional for him to give you money just like it's option optional for you not to owe him anything because if you're not if you're not purchasing something if you're not exchanging something if it is a gift you never owe people gifts for gifts that they give you so if, if you have a birthday party and people show up with gifts do you owe them something do you owe them a gift back? Are you going to go run to the store and buy them a gift and send it to them after they gave you a birthday gift? It's it's your gift. They give it to you. You owe them nothing. If they choose to give it to you and gift you because they hope, keyword hope, that you do something in return, it's not a guarantee. It's the risk everyone takes when they do that. So you don't have to do anything unless you want Get it? If they give you a gift, say thank you and keep it. You don't owe them nothing. Just like you don't go and buy everybody a gift who bought you something for Valentine's Day or, or your birthday. You're just like, okay, thank you. I appreciate that. You don't owe them nothing, man. But a thank you. Thank you. The reason why women feel like they owe is because they are used to giving. Stop being used to giving. You're the receiver. Oh, Monica, is is a man broke if he has a roommate in his house? You tell me, ma'am. Does he live paycheck to paycheck? Can he make his rent without his roommate? What what exactly does broke mean to you? If he can't pay all his bills, how he's supposed to pay yours? Know what I'm saying? So who knows? To me, unless he lives in a grand mansion and that dude is just living with him because he ain't got nowhere else to go, I don't think I'm not dealing with it. <laughs> okay. You so say you find out he found out you was talking to other men and getting money from him? 
tell him you didn't want to burden him with what, you know, the financial things that you really need because you really liked him. And you didn't know how to ask him for that much money because you really liked him and you didn't want to lose him. And either he'll accept it or he won't. Then he'll ask you how much you need and, or he'll dismiss you and you can just go find another one. Mm -hmm. You said, would I leave my husband if another man had enough money? Um, honestly, I have enough money. And I've met men that have enough money. So what am I leaving him for? That's the question. A better man with more money? Who's going to do whatever I need him to do? There's the answer. Is this man going to spend? Is he going to get me a house, car? Or is he going to ask me for anything? Is he going to do whatever I need him to do when I need him to do it? You say, yeah. Sprinkle, sprinkle. Well, he's going to have to prove it first. All right. We're going to need much proof. He can audition. Yeah, he can audition for the role. Sprinkle, sprinkle. Please share. Is it okay to be still accepting money from men? That girl, I'm gonna accept money from all men. Whether do y'all see how many Dusty send me money on here with an insult? I'm still gonna take their money. No rich man. I small town. Should I take a trip? Girl, go where the rich men are. Sprinkle, sprinkle. Girl, do y'all know how many Dusty's paid to to talk trash? I don't care. I don't. All I see is the money. I don't see what they're saying anyway. I don't hear what they're saying. The only way an insult can really insult you is if you take it as true. If whatever they're saying is not true in your mind, then it ain't true. You can insult me all day as long as you pay me because that's what work is. All work is is a grand insult. You clock in. You, oh, your boss going to tell you you didn't do something right. You're incompetent. You need to do better. You're getting insulted all day at work. Pick me show over there, jealous of you, talking trash behind your back. You're getting insulted every day at work. Every day. Especially when you get your paycheck and see the little amount that you're getting paid. You're getting insulted every day. But you still take it. Now, if a, if a man is insulting you, you can literally just ignore it and just collect the money and keep it moving. Like, I don't care what you think. Give me that money. Bye. For me, I'm not taking what, what a man says seriously if it's an insult. Because I, I don't believe it. It's definitely not true. He's paying to insult me. And I'm, and I'm not even insulted. So who's winning? <laughs> it's like, yeah, whatever, your mama. Give me that money. Okay. You said no dust against you shall prosper. <laughs> right. Why he spent on a few dates and now what? You're ghosted. Girl, he ran out of money. He got to pay his credit card bill. Sparkle, sparkle. Go, somebody, go get somebody with real money. Or maybe his wife came back or his girlfriend or he found a different one. Did you meet him online? It just all depends, man. So don't meet guys online. Oh, Donna, sprinkle, sprinkle. Thank you. You said, do I think it's too much to do that? If it's too much for you, it's like, I really don't care. Like if a man insults me, it's just words. They mean nothing. The money is what I'm looking for. Okay. I'm not taking that dude seriously anyway. I'm just taking his money seriously. Okay. Mm -mm -mm.
You said, where is Russell today? I think he's at Coachella, right? The money is the motive. Exactly. I remember when I used to have a job back in the old days, I used to take insults every day, left and right from my boss. <laughs> okay. What's the difference? One, you can cuss back out and still get paid. What is pick me? A, a pick me, a girl that, says, oh my gosh, I'm the best woman. I cook clean and wash dirty drawers. Please pick me. You don't have to pay for anything. That's a pick-misha. A pick-misha is someone who doesn't expect much from a man, as long as she got a man. <laughs> as long as she can claim him, even if you don't claim her. <laughs> Do y'all know how many women are in relationships who claim their man, but their man don't claim them? It's a lot. That's why you need to get money from them. If they <laughs> don't be a pygmy ship. You said we meet them in person, but many of them have online dating profiles, right? But they still separate you as a different person. From an online woman because they met you in real life they had the courage to get up and talk to you walk over have real chemistry with you know what you look like in real person with no filter so it's a little bit different you like them without them having to lie to you online so it's it's more of a connection you've been in a relationship for almost four years with a guy and he does buy you lavish gifts but i help him make ends meet and drives, and he drives the bands. He has been cheating. Girl, if you helping any man make ends meet, it's time to go. Sprinkle, sprinkle. Ain't he cheating? And you helping him with money? It's time for a makeover, ma'am. Go to your Sephora and ask him for some help. Say, make me look good so I can get me a provider. All right? Go to Sephora, quick, fast, and in a hurry. Go sit down and say, Shira Seven sent me. She said to fix me up so I can get a provider. Because what I got now is, uh, ain't it. <laughs> sprinkle, sprinkle. All right. Then go get your hair did or go buy a wig or something. Okay. Because what you're telling me is you don't look good. You say you held him down in jail and he went broke. Now he's being horrible. Girl, why would you deal with somebody in jail? He he had a, probably had a boyfriend up in there too. When your man go to jail, it's time to go get another one. Oh, Tiff, sprinkle, sprinkle. Thank you, girl. It's time to leave him there and go get you a better one. So you don't have to deal with him no more. <laughs> Okay, he can't do nothing from jail. What he gonna do? Be mad and cheat on you? Girl, you don't hold no man down in jail. That's for the other dude to do. Okay? Hi, Shira. I'm in my late 20s and my baby daddy is dusty. What? Want to break up? And he's emotionally manipulative and he need to ask him for some money, ask him to pay for something that he cannot afford. And he will dismiss himself. So, you know what? If we're going to be together, I want this. If you can't pay for it, I'm going back to my mom's. Because there's no reason for us to be together. Plus, you know, you're, you're not doing what I need you to do. So I don't want to be with you. Plus, he's your baby daddy, not your husband. So. 
Goodbye. No ring, no stay. No marriage license, no stay. You can't afford marriage, so go. Ask him for something, a high carat diamond ring. Ask him to pay for a wedding and he's going to be out. <laughs> Ask him to do something you know he won't do. Then use that to manipulate him. Okay? That's how you do that. Always manipulate them even harder. Okay. Will the side chick get better treatment if I leave? I can tell he loves, she loves him, but will he ask her for help too? Girl, the reason why he's not asking her for help is because you're helping him. Sprinkle, sprinkle. He ain't got to ask her for no help. He already got help. That's why he can afford a side chick, ma'am. Hmm. He don't need her to help because you're helping. You help building him for her. How to hide a young child when out dating for a provider like late date invites when I have no sitter. Okay. Um. Then just say I can't go out tonight. I'm so sorry. Let's go out and then suggest another date. Or tell them you need more advance. Notice. Because you have to work or you're doing some work online or you have a deadline or something like that. That has to get done. That's all. Or you're on call for something. I don't know. Uh-huh. You've been married for 20 years and your husband is not rich, but he do what? Hold on. But he provide. Okay. How can you make the most with your message? Um, the best thing you can do is allow him to provide and save your money. I mean, that's literally all you could do, right? You ain't got to work. Save your money. Do what you want. You know? Live your best life. You're a model and been supporting your boyfriend. Ooh. Until he finds work, but all he does is play video games. Girl, why are you still with him? Dump him, girl. His work is video games, except they're not paying him. Okay. You're, you're allowing him to sit home and pay. You're just making him into a Dusty. That's all you're doing is creating another Dusty. You don't want to be responsible for that, do you? <laughs> but you know what to do. Okay. If you play, if you're getting paid to play video games, wonderful. But if he's not, kick him to the curb, man. Or tell him he better have a job by the end of the day. You what? what? What kind of model are you? A hand model? Because I know you ain't cute playing for some grown dude. If you're pretty, you shouldn't be paying for no man. Okay, you must be a hand model. If you're not, stop acting like a hand model. Okay. You model nails? Then stop acting like it. You on there like this? You on there like this? You on there like this? Then stop acting like it. <laughs> I'm a mala. I'm a mala. But nail model. Only nail models pay for their boyfriends. 
If you ain't a nail model, or rethink that, rethink your life. Because you paying for a grown man to sit up there and play video games. Your man is the exact same age as me and he provides and is a great guy to me. Should I go for older or stay? Okay, here's my thing. When you 65, if y'all get married, if y'all get married, do you think this is headed towards marriage? When you 65 and he's 65, are y'all going to look the same? <laughs> All right, there you go. There's your answer. How do you want him to treat you at 65 when he's still a little younger than you? Thank you, Flora. Sprinkle, sprinkle. He is a provider, but I have to do a lot of tasks around the house. Should I ch charge, change? Uh, you should hire a maid, sprinkle, sprinkle, with his money. Okay, tell him to provide some money for a maid. So, honestly, somebody said necrophilia. <laughs> Thank you, Angela, sprinkle, sprinkle. You said grandpa chaser. So, if you look up the average 65-year-old woman versus the average 65-year-old man, that's what y'all are going to look like as a couple. Is he still going to be able to pull women? Is he going to overlook you for the younger chick behind you because you look like grandmother? So this is why I always tell you, date older because you'll always be younger. All right. So I'm just using these like these people as an example. I don't know. Okay. This is a 65-year-old woman or an average 65-year-old woman. So Google says. I know y'all can probably look younger if y'all wanted to. Okay, this is the average 65-year-old woman. Let's look at the average 65-year-old man. Now we're just going to do the math. Let's see where to do that. Okay. They both look old, but one looks like he'd be in the strip club, right? So you're going to marry somebody your same age. But when y'all get to 65, it's going to be a whole nother story. When y'all get to 50, it's going to be a whole nother story. When y'all get to 45, it's going to be a whole nother story. Okay. Y'all recognize this dude? Oh, shoot. <laughs> they, in the, they at the bar approaching. Okay, these are average 65-year-old white guys. And you do black guys, black women, it's going to look a little bit different, of course, but still. If you're dating somebody your own age, you're going to be looking way older than them when you're the same age. Because especially if you're working. Or especially if you fall into old lady outfits and hairstyles. Oh, B. Gonzalez, you're very allergic to dust. Yes, me too, girl. Smart, smart. Nobody needs dust, dust anymore. So marry young, marry older because you're always going to look young compared to him, not older. So let's see. I'm going to look up married couples in their 60s. Y'all are going to see the difference, what I'm trying to tell y'all. <laughs> okay, she looked like she in her 90s. Hold on. <laughs> y'all don't want, y'all just go look it up on your own, okay? Go do that on your own and you're going to see. It's not the same. The women always look way older. Unless they take really good care of themselves. Okay. Look. I don't know who these people are, but look. Same age. 
So, no, I'm not marrying nobody my age. Yep. And you think he, that dude is going to be faithful to her? When he can go pull somebody my age? Mm -mm. They, they not. <laughs> but still, what, what am I telling you? You marry somebody your own age. That's what you. That's what y'all gonna be looking like. <laughs> Old together and him, his eye wandering. As far as his cataract, I will take it. All right. Y'all might look good young, but you when you get up there in age after raising all them kids, cooking in all them meals every night, doing whatever you do, you're gonna look like. Worn out. And they still gonna look like they ready to go hit the strip club or hit the happy hour or hit the whatever. Some of them still be in the club there or what? Hit the lounge. Mm Pick Misha want revenge because people were asking how to get revenge on a man. You know, stop giving them more than they're giving you. And you won't seek revenge on a man. If you got more out of the relationship than you came in with, that's how. If y'all are giving too much, y'all always want revenge because y'all don't feel like y'all got what y'all were owed. Start by getting money and you won't need revenge. Okay? No getting revenge if you're getting paid. The reason why y'all want revenge because y'all ain't wouldn't pay. Literally. I'd be mad too if I didn't get no money through a, out a whole relationship. I'd be mad. I would want revenge too if I wouldn't get paid and all bills paid and stuff. I'd be mad too. That's why you need to get all bills paid. That way, if it don't end right or if it ends bad, you, you good to go. <laughs> you don't feel like you Gave too much because you actually collected. You say older men flirt with their younger with younger women in front of their wives. They do, and the wife can't do nothing about it because she old. What's she gonna do? And no offense against older people. This is just the truth. And we see it every day. We see it every day. Every time I go to IHOP or Denny's, I see it. I see it. I see it. Old couple. One look like the mother. One looks like the son. But it's the husband and wife. He's looking good. Like he's getting ready to go hit the golf course and the country club to look for some young sugar babies. And she look like she's going to go get back on her respirator after she have her bill. That's what they be looking like. <laughs> so, nope. So y'all, y'all remember that when y'all say I do at the same age. Don't leave your girl around me, true player for real. No. That was Usher's line. <sighs> married men benefit from being married. Women typically deteriorate. Well, married, uh, not if you, not if you date an older man. You see, you can beat all of those odds and statistics that these dusties be throwing around. If you date older. Mm -hmm. Marry older. Mm -hmm. 
then you won't have to seek revenge because what would an old man look like doing you dirty? You're going to look stupid because you could just go get another one with more money. <laughs> You're going to be like, I wasted a lot of my precious years that were left and money. Uh, well, meanwhile, you got the rest of your life to go get another one with more. So, <laughs> do I keep up with my, do I keep, do you keep your husband's accounting? Uh, I have an accountant, Sprinkle Sprinkle. <laughs> All right. Y'all know I'm about my money. I have an accountant. And he do all the taxes. Mm-hmm. What if I still have two women that are close to 65 now? Mm. Date older? Or if you're not trying to look for no man and you're just happy being your age, single, then live your life, live your best life, go have fun, travel, go on trips. Uh oh, Barry, sprinkle, sprinkle. Please give tips on why I should ignore that he has that's too busy to spend time with me to stop being lazy and to level up. Okay, here's the thing: a man ain't too tired, ain't too tired for nothing. He too tired of you. Sprinkle, sprinkle. If you need motivation from me. You asking the wrong one. You need to want to do better for yourself. Do it for you, not for him. Do it for you. You know what I'm saying? Do it for you. Or go get you some Ozempic. Sprinkle, sprinkle. <laughs> Either way. Look, I could have been on Ozempic. I could have been on Ozempic. I could have been skinny already. You could go get skinny too. It only take two weeks on those epic sparkle sparkle. I mean, we got the science now. You ain't got to be fat no more unless you choose to be. Like, I don't really have to get skinny because I already have everything. <laughs> so we got a choice every now. We got a choice on where we have on long hair, short hair, wigs. We got a choice on where you want to be fat or skinny these days. So whatever it is, if you can't motivate yourself to the gym, motivate yourself to the doctor. Sprinkle, sprinkle. Say, uh, I'm here for that Ozempic. How you doing? Mm -hmm. you, you don't like the gym either? Mm -mm, me neither. You don't like the gym? You here for that Ozempic too? All right, then. Three for Ozempic. Everybody else doing it. How all these fat celebrities become skinny in two weeks? They on that old zip. Go get your some old zip, ma'am. Not everybody that struggle with their weight for 30 years, not perfectly skinny with a big head. Go get you some old zip. Uh oh, Shira, you're 42 and you um plus size, but working on yourself. Okay. You went out Friday, happy hour, and gave main character energy. I got drink spot for me by a married man and practice flirting. Thank you. Go ahead, Heavenly. Sprinkle, sprinkle. Yes. See, it just matters about your self-esteem. You can lose weight if you want to. It's a choice now. Okay. All right. You say, I don't need those in it, girl. I, thank you, sprinkle, sprinkle. I really don't need a reason to take it either. I mean, I really don't have a reason to take it either. If I was trying to get snatched for some strange reasons, perhaps, but I'm good. Diaries of a stay-at-home princess. Uh-oh, sprinkle, sprinkle. Sheila, thanks to your advice, I got my first boyfriend to take me shopping on second date, and he bought me a Tiffany necklace a month later for Christmas. Oh, congratulations. Sprinkle, sprinkle. That's good. That's good. <laughs> you said too many foodie dates. <laughs> Yup. If I need Ozempic, I can, I'm, I'll go get it. When I need it, I know it's there. <laughs> All right. It's good to know it's there for me, waiting if I want it. 
Okay, options, options. You got to have options. Right now, I'm doing the eat once a day or eat one snack and eat once a day. You said, man, it takes a lot thicker women. Anybody got no Zipic? Uh-huh. I don't know. Y'all tell y'all Ozempic stories. Okay, there you go. Ozempic is a injection that makes you skinny. It's like what diabetics take to lose weight. <laughs> and it makes you real skinny fast. Like all those people you see that have lost weight like in two weeks, they were on it. <laughs> okay. It's like you got to go to your doctor to get it. Sure, he invested 5K, but oh my God, I gave it up right away. And um, is it normal? They listen interaction. And what, um, honestly, if you got 5K, you won, man. Because if you would have gave it up to some dusty, he would have been calling you, asking you for money. You know what I'm saying? Always leave with more than you came in with. Um, if if they didn't want you anymore after that, you still win. You got five thousand dollars. I mean, think about there's women on that are sleeping with men who at the bus stop. <laughs> OK, you good, man. Uh. All right. You said uh, Zimping is to help with insulin resistance, which is usually what happening with people who are overweight. Okay, thank you, Miss Ashley, for educating us. Okay, I'm following the skinny person diet. A skinny person told me eat once once a snack and then eat one meal a day. It was, it's actually working. Six. I went to the skinny person. I said, how do you stay skinny? I eat one snack and I eat one meal a day. That's all. That's it. That's it. I'm going to do that. Thank you. You're welcome. And drink water. Yes, of course. Water. So far, it's been working. I had a cereal bar for breakfast. And then I'm just going to eat dinner with my kids. Whatever that is going to be. Mm -hmm. Very human design. I don't even know what that means. But you know what? If I don't do any physical labor, I'm not walking around. I'm not doing anything very super active. I don't need to eat three meals a day because I have to burn that off. Three meals a day is probably more for people that do physical labor or work or standing up and walking around all day. I don't do that. So I don't need to eat three times a day. And I was thinking about that. Like, why do I, why do people say eat three meals a day or whatever, when you don't do that much to burn it off? If you're a stay at home, anything, you know, especially people that work from home or stay at home or are not very active in their, you know, uh, work life or whatever, whatever, doing physical labor. You don't really need to eat three meals a day if you're not even going to burn off that energy. It's just going to be stored. So since I'm quote unquote lazy and don't do much, I don't need to eat much. Some people just eat because they think they're supposed to. Yeah, if I'm not doing the work to burn it off, then I don't need to eat it. Unless you want to. So it makes sense to only eat one meal a day and a snack if you ain't doing nothing. <laughs> Literally, <laughs> like I ain't doing nothing. Why I need three meals? You lost forty pounds doing one meal a day. Really? That's so good. Congratulations. You say you want to gain weight? Then eat, eat, eat. How do you spot a dusty in dis disguise? They're on the dusty side of town. They don't offer to buy you nothing. 
you went on the most beautiful date where we had the most beautiful connection. He was even talking about our next date. The next day he ghosted me. Okay, well, that's so sweet. Maybe he was living in a fantasy and having the girlfriend experience. You know, a lot of a lot of guys can't afford the next date or they want to make you contact them first and get you all excited to chase. Man, you never chase. Don't chase. Be excited that he was excited that there was a chance. <laughs> but that's it. Like a lot of guys will do that to you. It's called love bombing. And then they will pull back to get you to chase. What you do is ignore and go get another one. And by the time they come back to check on you, see if what, what happened, why you ain't chasing them, you out with another one with more money. Okay? Never chase, always replace. Sprinkle, sprinkle. <laughs> You'll be like, why she ain't chasing me? I told her all these good lies. On to the next. How can you make him spend on your birthday that is coming up? He's older and wants to settle, but I don't want to yet. He's 28. You're okay. Tell him what you want and send him a link with it and tell him, oh my gosh, if we're going to, if we're going to move towards a more committed, don't say settle, say a more, if we're going to move towards a more committed relationship, then these are the types of gifts I'm going to want. And then you send him a choice of the gifts that you want him to get you for your birthday and see if he gets them all or gets one. It doesn't matter as long as that's what you want and see how serious he is. Let's tell him put his money where his mouth is. All right. That's how you get a good birthday present. Give him a give him a list and links and so he knows where to buy it or he knows where to go to get it or he knows how to order it. He's 58, you 42, and he is for marriage. But now he says he is scared of my temper and taking risks living with me because I am unpredictable. Okay. Um, you're too emotional. You need to calm down. Act like you're going to the doctor and say, oh, you know what? It was my thyroid. Just lie. Oh, it's my thyroid. And I'm on, you know, we got it back working. That's why there were so many mood swings. Oh my gosh. I'm so glad you told me that because I would have never got it checked. Now I'm all right. Then act, be on your best behavior for a while and don't act stupid. Then he's going to be like, okay. Okay. So you got to lie. Basically. Any advice for single mothers who want a sugar daddy? Yes. Go get one and don't tell them you have kids until they're uh, deserve to know, which means they've fallen for you. They've taken care of all your bills and paid your debt. Otherwise, like, why do they need to know? Sprinkle, sprinkle. <laughs> Do I count calories? No, I used to, but if I'm only eating one meal a day, I'm, I'm eating. Because um, I already know that naturally you burn 1,000 calories a day just by being alive. So whatever you eat on your meal, just subtract 1,000 calories. And that's how much you have left to burn. Okay. Like for the day, anyway. What do I eat? Whatever I want. I'm, I'm uh, plant-based, so I don't eat meat. But whatever meal that I choose to eat for that day, that's what I eat. Like yesterday, I had a like a personal sized vegan pizza, but this small, with a side salad, and I ate toast with jam in the morning and a cup of coffee. So I ate yesterday, and I lost one pound. So actually, I had two pieces of toast, a cup of coffee. A mini pizza that was vegan from Mod's Pizza. Shout out to Mod's Pizza. And a side salad. And a, a Pellegrino drink. I hope I said that right. And I lost one pound. So. Yeah. It was good. And then after that, 
we went to read books in the park on a blanket. So we were <laughs> outside. It was nice. Me and my kids. Sure, do you think it's wise to fall in love with a man who levels up you up majorly or should you be safe? Um, they're supposed to like you way more. So keep that balance. Keep the balance of them liking you way more always. Always keep the balance of them liking you way more because when you start to like them way more, the novelty wears off. There's no more challenge. Okay. You have three year old. Is it too early to freestyle date parenting wise? Provider provides, but I want more money. Also, I feel like if I focus on him versus me. Okay, first of all, as a mother, like I have kids, so I'm going to get the child support from the father. And if I date, I'm going to wait till the kid is able to go to school. So during the day, my whole day is free. So if your child is in daycare, that's when you freestyle. That's when you date. When your kid is out of school or out of daycare, that's your time with your kid. You know what I'm saying? So until they're old enough to take care of themselves or they're in school for eight hours a day, you can't really seriously do anything unless you find someone that, you know, wants to marry you and be a family. Otherwise, use your free time to date or freestyle. Freestyle is just going to hang out and meet people, you know, like go to the rich side of town, do your errands over there, look good, you know, so people approach you. So when you, when your kid is old enough for daycare or school, that's when you get out, man. You got this much time to prepare and level up so that when you get out there, you're good. Uh oh, thank you, Prince Mallory. Appreciate that. Okay. Yeah. Thank you. You said it's hard to keep it up. It's not hard because it's easy on my pocket. If I only have to pay to eat one time a day, because y'all know I ain't cooking. It's like DoorDash be trying to send me texts. You okay? You still alive? Um, yeah, I'm still alive. You ain't ordering as much. What's happening? DoorDash doing wellness checks. Where you at? <laughs> it's cheaper to do one meal a day. Go shopping the rest of the time. Um, like you can get more done. Like honestly, since I've been doing this one meal a day thing. I got coloring books. I've been reading books. I just go walk around. You can window shop if you ain't got no money. You can shop if you have money. You can try on wigs if you have a lot of wigs. Organize, uh, decorate. I don't know. Find something to fill the time that you usually fill with eating. Like usually I'm live throughout lunch and most of breakfast. So I really don't care. Or drink water. Keep you a big old thing of water like this. Whenever you get a little hungry. You good. <laughs> but the thing is, like, your body has to get used to it. And your stomach will shrink, like the capacity of food that it can hold. And so you'll be less hungry the more, the longer you do it. Because I noticed like when I first started doing the one meal a day thing, I was hungry. And then after a while, you eat less hungry because your stomach shrink. What's the top size of a pygmisha? She'll do anything to keep a man, to get a man, to have a man, to claim a man, to shelter a man. She will defend her dust in the comments. She will pay for him. She will hold him down no matter what. She's just really, really desperate to have any type of a man. She put up with everything 
and still pay whatever bills that he asked her to. She's very aggressive when it comes to approaching men. Yes. She's usually the approacher. How do you stop being a pick me if you like a guy a lot? Go get another one and balance out the like. So, for example, let's say you got one, you like him a lot. And you just like, you know what? I cannot be a pick me, sure. So you go get another one. And you got to balance this one and this one. So you can't overexert this one by being too pick me ish with him because you got this one. So you're balancing your pick me ness with both of them and it equals not pick me -sha. Get it? So get more than one so you don't have to pour all your, all this crap into the other one. Just be like, you know what? Let me have three because if you're going to be this desperate for one man, imagine having two or three. You're like, no, I got to go. I can't really right now. Maybe tomorrow. No, I'm not free that day. You're going to be more sought after if you're less available because you got to go to the other one. But if you have all the free time and all the energy and emotion and only putting it towards one person, you're going to smother them. You're going to smother them and they're going to be scared and you're going to be a pick me sure and they're going to run. So have three. Aren't you? You're 50 and you look 30 something. He's 53, a provider investing, paying bills, but recently found out that he has ED. What do you do? Girl, be happy. Sprinkle, sprinkle. You really want to sleep with him? Or you just want his money. How do how not to let him slack when you live together uh, by constantly reminding him. <laughs> Getting up looking good every day. Making sure he know ain't nothing changing. Unless the unless the amount of the value of yourself is going up. <laughs> that you might need more. Oh, she won't she won't sleep with him. Okay. Girl, I don't know what to tell you. Go, you're supposed to have two anyway. Where's the other one? <laughs> you said, who's it? <laughs> Y'all are silly. <laughs> Rotation. Okay. How does the wig stay on your head? You've never seen a wig? There's combs on the inside. There's, I also have like a thing underneath it that keeps it on. There's combs. Say so wig grips, combs, etc., etc. ma'am. Yes. Y'all like my wig? I be switching my wigs like almost every day now. <laughs> Any advice on finding a rich partner as a lesbian? What are girl go to the rich side of town where the lesbians hang out? I don't know. Where do the lesbians be hanging at, girl? What's the lesbian hang out? Y'all know better than I do. Sprinkle, sprinkle. I don't know. I, like, I really, somebody said Home Depot. Yo, okay. Home Depot on the rich side of town. There you go. <laughs> Y'all are stupid. That's not, I don't know. I'm not sure how true that is, so I don't know. Somebody said tattoo shop. Home Depot, 10 a.m. to 2 p.m. Okay. Where else? I don't know. 
that's all that's the only place they go. I don't think there's more places than that. Gay bars in nice neighborhoods. Okay. Sports bars, maybe. A sports bar? <laughs> I don't know. I have no idea. Brunch? He said in the woods. What? Someone says at work. I don't know. I, I can't tell you. Okay. And somebody said volleyball courts. Oh my gosh, y'all are so silly. Sure, how do you start a conversation to make someone pay your bills? Please give a scenario. Okay, the first time you talk to them, you start coming up with issues, but not major issues, like starts of issues. You know, you start with, you, you got to lead them into it. So by the third conversation, they're ready to offer you money for whatever problem you've got has built up over the time period that you've been talking to them. Okay. So the first thing you say, oh my gosh, my car sounds weird. Oh, it's nothing. Second time you talk to him, oh, my car was doing something really funny today. But you know, who cares? Anyway, so how was your day? Third time you talk to him, guess what? You need some money. Get it? Build up to the situation. Or if you don't want to say that, oh, my fake Aunt Ethel called today. She sounded a little bit under the weather. Second conversation, my, my fake Aunt Earl, or, well, I forgot her name, Ethel, is now may be in the hospital. But anyway, how was your day? Third time you talk to her, oh, guess what? Aunt Ethel took a turn for the worse. I might have to go to her funeral. Then you get the bad news, the fake bad news. Now you need some ticket money to get to the funeral, something to wear to the funeral, and he's got to help you because you're so distraught. And he thinks if he helps you get through this time, you, you feel like you're going to owe up what you want. So you start small and build to where it's believable. Whatever it is, write your own scenario, but start off with little nuggets and tidbits to where it's believable when you give the big news. Okay. You don't like, especially if you know, he's just not going to give it to you because of what you look like. You got to start and build it, get him invested in the story, get him asking questions about it, get him emotionally pulled in so that he wants to solve your problem. That's it. Okay. Your husband doesn't make a lot and he refused to get a second job. He constantly worry about my money. I'm recovering. Pick me should help. Tell him that worry about his money, not yours, because you might not be there long if he can't find no job. Sprinkle, sprinkle. All right. That's exactly what you tell him. Look, you need to buy a word about your money and your job, not mine. Because if you ain't getting, if you don't find one, I'm out. Tell him straight up. Y'all got to have tough love because y'all can't coddle these little boys. Unless y'all want to keep them, little boys. You can't coddle them. You need to say what you say, and that's it. You a grown man, go go figure it out. Or else you're going to have to figure out something else. Along with not figuring that out. Right? We don't care. We don't care. You can't have, you can't baby them. They're too old. Now, oh, eating a salad, trying to get papas this summer. <laughs> okay, LB, sprinkle, sprinkle. Okay. How do you tell a female their man is watching me if they're about to get married? I feel wrong to buy. Okay, first, stop calling them females. That's number one. It just shows your level of, I don't even want to say it, but it's, it's very low class. Um, all men cheat, 
most of the time right before their wedding or right after or during the whole marriage. So it's nothing new. But if you tell your friend she's going to be mad, if you, the timing is wrong, she's going to marry him anyway. She ain't going to believe you. It's too close to the date. She's going to think you're trying to sabotage her because you're jealous. So you can't say it's you. You have to say it's someone else. It's like, I saw him flirt with another girl. I'm just letting you know. But, oh, he's just doing that sometimes. He gets nervous. Let him know. Let her know a little bit, but don't say it was you. Yeah. Don't And don't call other women females. You're just reducing them to their sex organ when you do that. And it's very low class. It's something that Dusty does. Okay. Um, your boyfriend, 27 is, and you're 22. Will that be a pick Misha if I buy a girl, buy a house together so he can ruin your credit and leave? First of all, first of all, if you can't buy me a house, you can't have me. Sprinkle, sprinkle. That's number one. <laughs> That's number one. You don't deserve me if you can't, if you don't have a house for me already. I know he's young. That's why I don't date young. Because they can't afford nothing. So if you want to sit, if you want to struggle together, great. No, I didn't sign up for struggle. If it's not a struggle to pay the bills, it's a it's he's gonna flex with that house that's that you're paying half for, right? He's gonna flex with that. Like it's his, like he did. He's, he can't, you're never going to have, you're never going to have this amount of respect for him that you should have for a man if he's making you pay half the bills. That's all I'm going to say. You're never going to have the full respect for your man if you got to give him money at bill pay time. You can, you can buy a house or rent a house or do whatever you need to do by yourself. Thoughts on taking career downgrade to do something less stressful? Yo, man insists, bad idea. My man pays all bills. I want more time to study for my license, but also, okay, your man don't tell you what to do. Your man pay them bills and shut up. Sprinkle, sprinkle, tell him I'm gonna do what I gotta do. Okay. If you're doing all, if you're trying to do too much, you're going to get burnt out anyway. So tell him, tell him what you're going to do. And it, it's okay if he thinks it's a bad idea. It's, he ain't got to do it. <laughs> okay. Say, I respect you thinking it's a bad idea. I'm so glad you ain't got to do it. Yes. If you have to pay, if you have to move in with a man where you have to pay bills in the same house, that's your roommate. All right. Because if you stop paying, he's going to be like, it's going to start an issue, which means you're only a roommate. And if he stops paying, then he becomes a dusty. So why even put yourself in that predicament? One got to pay. That's it. And it should be him. He said he will be the mortgage and I pay the rest. Honestly, I'm still a roommate. <laughs> you know? Well, what about when you get pregnant and have to take time off work? How are you going to pay the rest? You going to be at work nine months pregnant, making, making the utilities? Ask him for exclusivity after two months. He said, sure, works for me. I'm sad he wasn't enthusiastic. Now he thinks he has me overthinking. Huh? Girl, is exclusivity all bills paid? Because I'm not being exclusive to nobody that's paying, that not paying no bills. That means he didn't ask you. You asked him. That's pick me sure. But if he's paying bills 
and you needed clarity, great. If he's not paying bills, let's pick me free. Okay. Okay. I know y'all live in reality, in the real world, and so do I. And if I didn't take it, because I didn't marry nobody close to my age. That's why I didn't have to. So I didn't have to split bills because I married somebody too close to my age. Okay. Think about this, ma'am. Think about this. You're 23 and he's 27. Think about when y'all are 60 and 65 or when you're pregnant or when you're 50 and or 45. Or when y'all have kids that are teenagers, are you still going to be paying it? You got to drive them everywhere, cook it clean. You still going to be doing all that? Mm -mm. What if you're pregnant with twins and the doctor orders you to bed rest? What if you get pregnant and you can't work? What if you want to stay home with your children and raise them instead of throwing them in daycare for nine to eight hours a day and paying for daycare? What if you want to do that? Who's going to pay the utilities then? See, it doesn't work. You know what? So I'm not doing it. Unless you can find a way to make money in your sleep, I ain't doing it. Mm -mm. If he has a good amount of savings, what he can do is put his money, his savings into a CD, have it mature, and then use the money from the CD to pay the utilities that he's earning from it. Tell him you need to find some ways to invest his money, to make money, so you ain't got to do that. Okay. Oh, should a woman cheat not to get emotionally attached? If that's what she got to do, sparkle, sparkle. So here's the thing. Now, this is sad, but it is true. Y'all listening? When we live in a world where becoming emotionally attached to a man is a bad thing, we have to realize what type of men are these why are you scared to get emotionally attached to a man? Think about this. Why do we have to go get another one to stop ourselves from getting emotionally attached to a man? Because you don't trust that man. Why don't you trust that man? You don't trust him with your heart, right? So if you take all emotions out of it, and you have a goal, not attached to the man, but to whatever they can do for you. You don't have to do all that unless you want to. So stop attaching to him, attach to his money. Okay? If you can't do that properly, that's when you need more than one. Uh oh, Bunny, sprinkle, sprinkle, you're 27, you have a car, and you make six figures, you got a house already. What type of provider, the one that can afford to cover all them bills? Sprinkle, sprinkle. Because there's no use of bringing anybody into your life unless they can approve upon it. Which means either they'll let you stack your money and pay for everything or they'll upgrade you. Otherwise, why are they there if they can't upgrade you? If y'all have the exact same thing, then... It's the same thing as like, okay, so one of y'all are going to end up doing more for the other. If you like him more, you're going to do more for him. If he likes you more, he's going to do more for you. So which one is it? If y'all like each other the same, that's not going to stay the same. So it's always better to be at the advantage. Okay. He's got to make more money or he's got to definitely like you way, way, way more and not spend your money at all and let you save it. Okay. 
I mean, you spend a little bit of your money for stuff here and there for yourself, but he don't ask you for nothing. And he make, he provides. Okay. How do you treat men after you get what you want from them? So they keep giving. How do you appreciative appreciate them? Tell them how much you like how they spoil you and appreciate all the things you do. Uh, they do for you and how, you know, you can't imagine life without them. Yeah, you said because they're not trustworthy. Exactly. Women cut themselves off emotionally from men because they don't trust them anymore. So either they find another man to spread the love with or the emotion with. Or they just focus on the man's money and are cold hearted. So whichever one you prefer. <laughs> what if he's stingy? Go to the other one. That ain't stingy. Okay. What if a man knows you don't trust him? He should know you don't trust him. He hasn't earned it, has he? Has he earned your trust? You don't give it away. You don't just blind. Do you trust? Do you take your kid over some stranger's house that you barely know and leave them over there because you're supposed to trust people blindly? No. People, if everybody else in your life has to earn your trust, why not a man? When you go get a job, they do background checks. They ask resumes, references. They call and everybody asking about you. But you're supposed to give your blind trust to some random? Some dude? A guy? That doesn't make any sense. They're supposed to earn that, baby. You said your husband pay all the bills, but don't want you knowing or seeing his paycheck. Well, let him pay all the bills, man. And ask for something good for Christmas and birthday and, and whatever other holiday. Sprinkle, sprinkle. Just if you really wanted to find it, you could just be smart. <sighs> How do you be mean to men, but not actually rude that people won't forget? You don't. OK, nice, nasty. Go look up nice, nasty. Go look up video examples of nice, nasty. Study Southern women, how they are nice, nasty. Be nice, nasty. That's a uh, it's a nice way to be mean. <laughs> like, oh, you're so sweet. I love this necklace. My mom would love it. It's so her style. Thank you. I'm definitely going to let um, give this to her because she loves this type of style. It's a little bit too old for me, but it's a nice gesture. Thank you so much. That means I don't like what you just bought me. It's old, old looking, you know, or, oh, you're so sweet to offer me a coffee, but I already had my coffee this morning and I just get the jitters after my first cup, which I have first thing in the morning. So, you know, lunch or dinner would be much better as a date. That means, no, I don't want your nasty cheap coffee date. Or I don't pay for dates. Oh, you know what? The last time I, you know, the last time I went out for a nice evening, you know, I was totally spoiled. And, you know, I was like, you know what? That's the only type of man I want to date from now on. And I'm so glad you recognized that and asked me out. And I can't wait to see how you spoil me, too. That's it. Nice, nasty. That means you paying or I ain't staying. Oh, um, I want you to pay half the bills. Baby, if I wanted to, a roommate, I sure would put an ad out for one. But you're so sweet. No, I don't need a roommate at this time. I need a husband or a man. See, nice, nasty. What? Mm. 
You said, how do I have a husband? Legally? We went to the courthouse. We got married on a yacht. He said, I do. I said, okay, I guess I do too. And then we got married. <laughs> sprinkle, sprinkle, that's how. You mean, why would someone marry me? Is that what you're asking? Because I'm me, duh. Who would want to marry me? Okay. <laughs> um cuz I ain't waste no time with a dusty that's how I got married. Y'all over there wasting time with dusties and fairy tales. I'm over here making fairy tales and getting money. And been married. So that's why. That's how. There you go. Y'all over here making excuses. And I'm over there living, walking how I talk. <sighs> you said Beauty and the Beast. That's the only fairy tale I like. Because it's true. <laughs> yes, tale is old as time. True as it can be. Anyway, he's still buying you stuff and paying your bills, etc. Why is it your business? What? What he's doing? <laughs> exactly. Nobody cares as long as them bills pay. Um. Kissing frogs to get Prince Charming versus going straight to the beast. Exactly. I'll be kissing frogs, going through the swamp, trying to get out the path of the shadow man and still end up only owning a little restaurant where you got to cook all day. Your man going 50-50 with you. No. It's beauty and the beast. It's all or nothing. If he got to prove himself, even in his own castle, he got to prove himself. Period. <laughs> was Gaston a dusty? He was undercover dusty, man. He was he was on the DL too with his friend. And Beauty and the Beast, yes. Gaston was trying to find him a good old beard. That's why he wanted the most beautiful. Anyway, <laughs> oh, beautiful singing voice. Grateful to catch your another life. Thank you, CJ Sparks. Sprinkle, sprinkle, girl. Appreciate you, Gaston. <laughs> yeah, Gaston was gay. He was. He wanted a beautiful beard so he can keep his little side piece. What's his name? His little side kick, dude. Gaston was not rich. He was in the uh, military. He was a military war hero. Y'all know I know all the details. That's my favorite one because it's the realest. <laughs> okay. What do you do if they, co they come back after ghosting? Make sure you get some good ghosting comeback money. Like, where's my gift? Where's my money? You can't come back. 
unless you pay them. That's what you do. You charge them. Charge them money, bam. It's like I'm not finna sit, let I'm not finna sit here and let you waste my time again. So you got to pay. Ghosting penalty, exactly. You must pay the ghosting penalty or the ghosting fee in order for me to waste my time with you again. If you can't do that, be gone, poof, bye. How do, what do you do when they are on escort websites and, but they pay for your meals? Girl, all you need is a meal. Sprinkle, sprinkle. Girl, all you need is a meal and they want escort sites. It means they're not getting ready to pay your bills. They're going to pay an escort, but they'll pay for your food. So put them under free food and your phone and move along. Sprinkle, sprinkle. Whenever you got a craving for something or you don't want to buy your own meal or when you don't have a date for that evening and you just want to eat at a nice place call say hey what you doing time to eat put them under free food ma'am put them where they belong that's your free food connect okay y'all don't know how this works y'all don't know how this works ladies tell tell all these youngsters out here Back at well, I don't know y'all. Y'all, we still do this. I don't know if they do this anymore. But back at the J, we had men listed under what they can do for us. But like, there's phone bill. There's there's food. Oh, there's food and drinks, girl. We got to tell food we can't. Well, we are gonna get food and drinks. <laughs> so you were listed under what you could do for us. Okay, they go rent right there. We got to cancel all of them. We got to go get rent. Uh-oh, Barry, sprinkle, sprinkle. Thanks for the motivation. Gonna go to the spa. Uh-oh, thank you, girl. Sprinkle, sprinkle. Have fun. Y'all still do that? Exactly. Y'all put them under what they are known for. So he, he takes me out to eat, and but won't buy me no gifts or money. Okay, put him under food. Well, he buys me gifts, but won't, won't, won't pay rent. Okay, put him under gifts. Well, he pay bills, but he won't. Don't give me nothing else. Then put him under bills. Now you got the perfect man, all three combined. There you go. Call one when you need the bills paid. Call the other one when you want them gift. Call the other when you want to eat. Until you can find one that can do it all, juggle. All right? <laughs> when you meet one that say, I can handle all of that, give it to me. I got it. Then you can dump all the other ones, but stay ready just in case that one don't work out. You can go back and get what, uh, more. Okay? That's how you do that. Stop trying to make one man into the man that they can't be. They offered you one thing, take it. The other one offering you this, take it. The other one offering you that, take it. Together, you got everything paid. Amp your belly full. Okay? And sometimes you can, like, if, if, if you know uh, free food is going to stay giving free food, you can invite your, your you know, another person with you. You're like, hey, can my cousin come? Can my sister come? She's with me. They'll be like, okay, let's go. Then they'll just pay for all y'all's food. <laughs> okay, free food, free drinks. That's your name. They can't afford nothing else, so just let them pay for your bill. Right? After that, go meet rent. After that, go meet gift. And think about this around the holidays and your birthday and Christmas time, you're gonna get three gifts. You do that still? Okay, Becca. Stop trying to make one person the main and make until the main one arrives. The main one can handle all everything. Okay. They all get the same gift list. <laughs> but if you never find one who will do it all, then, then keep the rotation or find the one that can do the most. Mm -hmm. Mm 
He said they can be part of the team. Mm-hmm. What do you do with your money? So keep it. <laughs> hey guys, y'all, what? Starfire slapping. <laughs> Actual. I'm trying to read some of these comments. How to start up a conversation in public? Men are and girl, that's masculine. Unless you drop something and they pick it up and talk to you first, it's kind of masculine to go up to a man. Unless you're just really drunk and talking to everybody, <laughs> which you shouldn't be. But or unless you're asking him about something like if y'all are at a bar and you're asking him to pass you the menu or something like that, that's it. But you do not approach and introduce or anything. You let them come to you. If they're intimidated, they don't like you that much. Because a man ain't going to let nothing stand in the way between him and the woman that he actually wants. Okay. So people are lying to y'all by saying men are intimidated. No, they just don't want to approach you because they're not interested. You think a grown man is going to sit there, go to a bar to socialize, and then don't socialize? That's done. They're training y'all to be masculine and approaching men so that you look like the aggressor, like you look like the desperate one, okay? No man that was ever going to spend money on me was intimidated, okay? They approached. Think about it. Y'all are getting, uh, approach a man. Okay, approach a man for what? To let him know that you want him sexually, to let him know that you want him more than he wants you. No. Heck no. Nah. You're gonna you gonna approach me so you know the deal. You know the who the prize is. Uh oh, Nina, sprinkle, sprinkle. Do you think th this hotel staff and bar recognize me? It's the best hotel in my city, and I used to go there a lot with providers. Um, I would say stay out of hotels because it makes you look like you know you're there for a reason. I would say go to lounges restaurant bars, you know, nice areas of town, but why the hotel? Which what's in the hotel that's not at the the nice place, the lounge or the the uh, nice restaurant bar, the luxury, you know, eateries. What's what's the difference? Are you going for some type of convention, some type of event? Why are you there? Is it is the hotel like a lounge place that all the locals go, or is it only for people that are passing through and traveling? Like, that's what I always tell people. If you're going to a hotel, people know why you're there. So if that's the only, like if you live in a small town and that's the only bar y'all got, then everybody probably going, right? But if you live in a big city or a decent sized city and you choose to go to a hotel, that's totally different. If everyone, if a lot of local people go to the bar at that hotel for like happy hour or like that work by nearby, and that's the only reason you're going, be out by a certain time. Be out after happy hour is over. Sprinkle, sprinkle. If you, unless you're going to a party or an event, I'm not. I'm not thinking that's a good idea. Okay. How to do this and protect your virginity? Don't sleep with nobody. There, that, that's sprinkle, sprinkle. Um, lie and pretend like you want to. You might want to, maybe, and just don't sleep with them. All right. The same reason, the same way all other women don't sleep with men. Just don't do it.
if you feel like you owe men something, it's because your mentality is messed up. You don't owe them anything. Okay. You've been single for six years. Should you tell this to the man when they ask? No, never tell them the truth, ma'am. Say six months. Take off years and put months. You'll be all right. Why'd you break up? They moved out the country. That's all you tell them. You didn't want to go with them. Sprinkle, sprinkle. <laughs> you know, smart women never tell people all their business. So even on a first date, keep that same intelligence and stop telling people all your business. Okay. Mm -mm -mm. How do you deal with men who are too handsy, touchy, uh, hold their hands, hold their hands so they can't touch nowhere else and squeeze it? Then you control the hand. <laughs> or start being handsy with his wallet. <laughs> when he don't have the time to meet again, then he don't want you, ma'am. Sprinkle, sprinkle. When he says he won't have time to meet again, that means you only going to meet him one time and that's going to be it. So that means what it means. Waste of time. Okay. You told a man where you live and now you regret it. Tell him, tell him you moved in another man. Sprinkle, sparkle. Or your mama live with you now. There you go. Or your, your brother moved in as a roommate or something. Just lie. Lie, lie, lie. Tell him you got a roommate. Your mama moved there. Somebody moved there. You go keep him from trying to come over. Because he don't know who's going to be at the door. Okay. Do you have to be skinny to attract? Nope. Okay. How to make a player commit to you by being a bigger player that can do better and get richer? Men. That way his player is null and void. That's how. If you're not a bigger player, then don't even bother. Do you need to be an eight plus for this game? Depends on your target. Depends on your target. If you're, if you're dating older, much older, no. Y'all, back in the day, I seen women that were literally a five and under pulling old guys with money to pay their bills and car notes. Most of the people that you see out and about, like I always, okay, no offense to anybody. And this is just reality that we're talking about. So don't take offense to this. Most strippers at the average strip clubs are literally fives and belows, especially in the face. Half of them can't even do their makeup right. So yes, you can get one. What are you talking about? Eight 
And that's not an insult. That's just the truth. If, if you can get a job at a strip club stripping and you're not even an eight, you can, you can pull anybody that you want to. That's the right target. Because think about this. Who's going to strip clubs? Men who can't get no woman or men who just like see naked women, right? Men who just want attention from women, right? Oh, Chaney, sprinkle, sprinkle. So if you, okay, back in the old days, women used to go to a strip club to pick up the men with the money. Back in the old days. They probably still do that today. You go get a, you find a mid stripper that you look way better than. <laughs> you just walk by. Instead of, now they're looking at you. And that was, that's how they did in the early 2000s and late 90s. You went and took them in. I, right out the strip club because the ATM right up in there. You're just like, you know what? Oh, what are you doing here? Oh, I'm just having a drink with my friend. Oh, does your friend work here? Yeah, or no, you're just here for a girl's night just to have fun, you know. My friend, you know, just wanted to come. She was curious. Oh, well, where are y'all going after this? Oh, we're going to such and such place. Well, can I come? Are you paying for all of us to get in? Because that's the only way that you're going to come. Sure, I'll pay. Then we go, the man meet us up at the door and pay for everybody getting the club, then buy us drinks. That's how we used to do back in the day. Mop. You go get you pick one up from the strip club, you get them to pay for all your friends to get into the next club, and they drinks. Sprinkle, sprinkle. <laughs> if you're extremely shy, snap out of it. Okay. He's divorced and don't want to get married. Good for him. Just get his money. Who cares? Marry somebody that wants to get married. Someone says, if you're shy, put on a character and act. Exactly. Girl. I'm trying to tell y'all, back in the day, we used to just pick up dudes from random places. They couldn't believe we were talking to them and make them go to the next place and pay. <laughs> Be like, okay, it's almost time to go to the next spot. You can go find somebody to pay. Okay. <laughs> they usually got a big bear belly and they bald and short. That's the one he's going to pay. All right. You said, how do you stand out as a natural woman? Um, go to where your beauty is admired in its natural state. Because if you have to go to clubs and lounges and bars where everybody got on wigs and weaves and stuff like that, you know, is, unless someone is particularly looking for a natural woman or if you're way more attractive than everybody with their wigs and weeds on and makeup and all that kind of stuff, then you're going to attract anyway. So go to where you're going to attract the most. Oh, Chaney, Sprinkle Sprinkle, thank you for the donation. Y'all have to realize something like... Back in my day, when I know I would keep saying back in my day, but when I was younger and we used to go out, people would just try to look their best and wear makeup and do their hair and, you know, all this kind of stuff because they had to compete with everybody else wherever they were. Right. There was no movement for this. And there was no this, this and that. Everybody was trying to get in where they fit in, literally. So now it's very different. Now it's like I have this whole belief system of being natural and doing this. And, you know, we didn't have that back then. We just went and got the man and use whatever bait got him in, you know. So I don't I'm not the right person to ask that question to. I don't know. I just I did what, what was going to get the money. OK. 
probably more upscale places on the super rich side of town and owning uh, your natural look is probably going to be the best bet. Okay. Why do men say that you're using them and they take us to a fancy restaurant? Huh? If they take us to a fancy restaurant, using them for what? Food? So you using me for eye candy because you ugly. Why would I be seen out in public with you if you ain't taking me nowhere nice? Uh-oh, Shivani, sprinkle, sprinkle, you're a goddess. Thank you. Say, I'm arm candy, you food. All right, put me in your phone under arm candy. I'm putting you under food. Get it now? You think I'm going to be seen out in public with you if you taking me to McDonald's? Heck no. You under free food, I'm under arm candy. We got it? All right, then. You ain't under rent. You ain't under bills. You ain't under car note. Okay? Because you think you're being used for food. So obviously you just food. <laughs> I ain't finna argue with you, food. Start calling them food. I'm not finna argue with you, food. <laughs> uh oh, Naomi, sprinkle, sprinkle, how to stop loving him. Love yourself more. You love yourself more. You put yourself first. If he ain't doing the same thing, he don't love you. You can't love him unless he loves you more. Just start think of it like that. If he doesn't love you more, you ain't supposed to even love him. You're not even supposed to love a man who don't even love you more. That's that's dumb. Okay. Uh, uh, uh. He's busy to what? He said he's too busy to call and text, but always want to marry you. Okay, he need a green card and ain't got no minutes on his phone, ma'am. Sprinkle, sprinkle. <laughs> All right. How can you constantly get money from a man without sleeping with him? Um, make sure he's old and make sure he knows that you're not doing nothing from him until you, all your bills and debts are paid off. You ain't got to work no more. You feel secure in a committed relationship with someone who is financially, uh, stable and taking care of you and makes you feel safe. That way, you know, he got a long way to go before he can get anything. <laughs> if he wants to take you seriously. Lead them on with false hope. Someone says dress more mature. If they don't take you seriously, it's for your age. Yeah. How do I know if a man loves me more? If they paying them bills, ma'am. They don't want you to suffer. When you ask them for something, they do it. That's how you know. <laughs> that's true people you like to use the word love to get what they want but I need I need you to back it up with some uh, paying some bills and proving that love with, with your paychecks okay We're not going to argue about natural and whatever, whatever. Men like what, look, what looks easy and what other men don't look at. Okay? What can get you out the door in five minutes, what don't cost them an arm and a leg, and what other man ain't looking at. That's what they like. But if they didn't meet you natural, they know what they really like. Okay? If you didn't meet, your, if you didn't meet that man natural, he don't like natural. He wants you to look natural so you can't meet nobody else. So however you met that man, that's what he really likes. Especially if he approached.
What would be a smart move next if a man buys you everything you need already? To so make another list of more things that you need. And, or a, a gift to start your own business, like a monetary gift to start your own business. You know, something major. Maybe he can buy you a rental property. I mean, you can always use more. What kind of vehicle do you want? See if he can do that too. And if he does all those things and proves his love, then great. You know, he likes you way, way more. Mm -hmm. You say strip club, here we come, girl. <laughs> go, go at the time, right before the real clubs open up, if y'all are young. This is for the youngsters. For the youngsters who still club, go get you an old man at the strip club before the real clubs open. And have him take you to the other club or follow y'all. Like You go in a group. I know y'all be traveling in packs. So have him follow y'all's pack to the next club. He going if, if it has valet parking, he's gonna cover the valet, all the entries, and probably the first round of drinks before y'all ditch him. Okay. <laughs> you think he finna walk up in the club with five women looking all like a pimp? All he doing is paying for y'all to get in and y'all's first round of drinks, and then y'all ditching him, right? Mm-hmm. Or y'all got to babysit him. Y'all got to take turns babysitting him at the bar. So somebody got to get the contact number. So when y'all feel like going out again, he would pay. For, he can pay for y'all. <laughs> That's how you all got to do it. You got to babysit him. What? Text the next chick. Okay, it's your turn. Come over here. Sit down with this dude. Have a drink. Then then and y'all still getting free drinks every time because he's gonna pay for it. Then he's going to call his friend. Oh, my God. I met this whole group of beautiful women and they took me to this club and they sat and will talk to me all night. I felt so good. Yeah, I'm take them out again tomorrow or the next day. And so you don't really have to pay. This is how we used to get around with no money or without having to pay. Just get, get you one to pay. Go pull one out of a strip club. Here you go. They used to spend the money on women in the strip club. <laughs> you said men don't talk like that? Okay. What to do when men is mirroring me as a form of manipulation? How do I benefit? Just start playing with your boobs. Like. <laughs> You mean in act like actions, like not calling if you don't call? Da, 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 da. Oh, yeah. Like if, if if you're not doing something, he don't do something. Call somebody else. He is <laughs> call somebody else. Like, you know what? I may have acted weird. Yeah, what you want to go out? That's how. How can you be smart with men without them getting de defensive mood? Have have a sense of humor with it. I gotta go in a few minutes though, y'all. Okay. You say you're focusing on yourself and he doesn't like the new me. What do I say to him? I've outgrown you. Next. <laughs> say, you know, if you think I'm outgrowing you, just say so. He said, how you get your mojo back from dating one man at the same time? It, it should be natural. Like, if y'all are young, 
y'all should be going out all the time. This is what your 20s are for. You're going to meet multiple people. It's, it's so easy. You just throw yourself back into it and go out and keep having fun. Do it often. And you're going to meet more people. You got a crush on a colleague, okay? You follow him on Instagram, okay? Until if, unless he approaches you, leave it just as a crush. Oh, Dev, Dev, sprinkle, sprinkle. Multi millionaire man told me to go. What? F off after I asked him why the credit card wasn't working after one week of not working. Is this giving property? Yeah, fake. Are you sure he's a millionaire? <laughs> So you must say so your network must be tied up somewhere. You ain't got no real money. That's all right. I understand. Don't worry about it. Get yourself together, and then go find another one, ma'am. Embarrassing. <laughs> okay. Do you believe when women say they are with millionaires? I believe they think they're with millionaires. Some of them. I believe if you are, if your net worth is in the millions, but you don't have access to that money, that's a whole different thing. You know what I'm saying? It, there's different types of millionaires, you know. Ones that have it to spend and ones that don't. So whichever one that they're dealing with. Um, he said, I'm famous right now. People are talking about me on different channels. Okay, well, I don't really watch different channels though, of people talking about me. <laughs> but thanks for letting me know, Sprinkle Sparkle. What to say to Dusty's to make him realize he will be upgraded if he doesn't provide for me more? The same, what you just said right here. If you don't, you don't step up to provide, then I'm moving on. Can't stay stuck with you. That's what you tell him. How can you talk like that about men, but your husband still loves you? Please tell me. Um... Because he um, agrees. <laughs> like he literally agrees. What do I say that's so bad? What's 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 a lie? Sure, a potential provider bought you two hundred dollar versus gift card. First date talking about he can't wait to see me. What I get? Should I see him again? What? Okay, you mean like a Victoria's Secret gift card? You can't see. Okay, girl, get you some spray. Show up smelling good. Sprinkle, sprinkle. <laughs> I bought a bunch of sprays and lotions. I bought, girl, they got, they got cosmetic bags, makeup, perfume. Girl, go, go to that section and then show him what you bought. Tell him you need another one because you you totally forgot about the lingerie. Okay, sprinkle, sprinkle. Plus, they got workout clothes too. You can get whatever you want. Don't get no lingerie. Tell them you didn't have enough for the lingerie. It was only $200 and you need a little bit more. Someone says, buy your lingerie from Timu and then. <laughs> what? Y'all are silly. If y'all don't understand, I'm from a different culture. Like I can talk however I want. I'm free. Whatever I say, whatever my opinions are, it don't have to agree with what my husband thinks. And most of the time he does agree. Okay. So I haven't really said anything untrue about men, right? 
if men have rosters of women, what's the difference? Why can't a woman have a roster of men? I don't understand. What's the difference? Y'all always talking about equal rights. It ain't, it ain't fun when the woman wants to have equal rosters, right? Y'all want to split bills, then we y'all y'all trying to split bills, and but y'all are upset about women having rosters like men have rosters. I don't understand. You picking and choosing? Wouldn't you rather a woman have her, her bills paid by someone else and just put you under food if all you can afford is food? Wouldn't you rather keep your your um, your money in your pocket? If all you are is food to a woman, wouldn't you rather her be honest and say, you know what? I like your company for dinner. Let's just go have food rather than trying to milk you for all you got, even though you can't afford it. Let her have a roster. It's easier on your pockets. You get arm candy. She get food. Other dude pay rent. He, he might get a little bit more. Or less, depending on what he looking like. So. Leave them women alone if you can't if you can't handle all of their expenses. Don't be mad. Don't be mad if you can't handle a one woman's expenses and benefit her life. Don't be mad at her roster. If you include it in it, be happy. You part of the team. Sprinkle, sprinkle. I gotta go in a few minutes. Be happy you part of the team. Unless you can fully provide for a woman, be happy you part of one of them's team. You can't fully provide. You can't fix your lips to say something about a roster. Okay. Men always talking about women are hoes, women are this, women are that. But y'all follow all the hoes. Y'all Instagram look like whole city. Clicking and clacking, like everywhere, slobbering all over it. But y'all can't stand them. Oh, that's prostitution, but you all over everybody's IG site that's half naked and won't even deal with you. He said men are gold diggers too. Why are they hating? Exactly. Because they're mad that what they have to deal with, they don't even want to show out in public. Uh, so don't 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 be hypocrites, men. It's not even fair. Don't be hypocrites. If you don't, if you don't agree with it, just say, I don't agree with a woman having a roster. If you don't want to be part of the team, don't be part of a team. Go find a way to fully provide so you don't have to deal with none of this. Or don't date. It's that easy. Or go marry and find Pick Misha. I mean, you have so many options. You have a lot of options. You can marry Pigmisha, Barbara the Builder. You can, you know, date within your own league. You can do a lot of stuff. This is not for all men. This is just for the men who can afford it. I got to go, y'all. But thank y'all, everybody, for donating. I really appreciate you guys. Thank y'all, everybody. Who sent cash apps? Y'all are so sweet. Um, shout out to Prince Mallory, Angela, Bab Baba, Mama, Baba G, Bianca, Bianca, Jazz. Thank y'all. I appreciate y'all. Oh, I don't know if y'all are online, but someone sent me a really nice gift from my gift list. And I forgot to thank them. It's been a while. Um, they sent me. Okay, it's from Chinetta. Thank you, Miss Chinetta. She sent me these beautiful coasters that are made of this really nice stone. So thank you, Miss Chinetta. If you're here listening, I appreciate you. Sorry if I forgot to do this in the beginning. But look how nice these are. They absorb the liquid because it's like clay. So your drink 
when it condensates, it's like soaks up the liquor. I mean, the water, the liquid. And so they're really pretty. They match my room decor. Thank you, girl. All right. So I got to go now, but y'all stay dust free. Don't be dealing with no dust. And y'all get my book, Sprinkle Sprinkle. Okay. How to date a provider and avoid a dusty. Live in a dust free era. It's on Amazon. I'll put the link here to all my books. So y'all can have some good reading material. Thank you, Goddess Laurel. Sprinkle, sprinkle. Um, I'll see y'all later.